know, thanks for what you do with your podcast and all the rest. Uh, you're doing a great job. Hope everybody keeps tuning in. You get a lot of good info, a lot of insights, understandings of how to get strong, how to stay strong, how to use your strength. You do a great job, dude. <laughs> you make things better than they are in real life, I think. If you don't follow Massonomics, y'all do it. Social media, uh, website, everything. Massonomics. Yeah. We're back again, this time for episode 282 of the Massonomics Podcast, the lifting podcast about nothing recorded live from Western Northeast, South Dakota. My name is Tanner. And my name is Tommy. Tanner, obviously the great thing about number 282, yeah. it plays the same both ways. Ah, yeah, whatever that's called. Like fire truck. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, just like that, <laughs> except not. <laughs> but everyone was thinking about it. Yes, they were. <laughs> yeah, yes, they were. Um, Tanner, I think we got a fun episode here. Oh, I think we've got a, a lot of good conversation in store. On this I one. just have a feeling. Perfect. I've got that that feeling that we've got a lot of good stuff to cover here. And I have a feeling we got something really good to cover here. I would say specifically. People should really tune in for this next part yeah. because there's a few details I want to make sure people are are, are set clear on. And okay. that is, Tanner, are you ready? Yeah, I'm okay. excited. This episode is brought to you by the Strength Co. Now listen, there there is a timeline that is being established here, so I want you to pay okay. attention. Grant Brogy, I, I want to say, I forgot. Now we we talked, is, is there a certain level of... Um, um, rolling of the tongue I have to do oh. there. I don't want to do him any disservice. Or did we just say no? It's and you also don't want to do it too much. Yeah. Like to like, that's uh, what, <sighs> like okay. The, I'm uh, already messing it up. Okay. I think it was good. Though. Okay. Grant Brogy was born in the late 80s, nearly <laughs> two decades after Buddy Caps began lifting. <laughs> in the late 90s, Grant's brother Jordan bought him the new Encyclopedia of Modern Bodybuilding by Arnold Schwarzenegger, and Grant's love for weightlifting began. In 2001, Grant joined the local YMCA and began training with weight. In 2009, Grant discovered the book Starting Strength, and in 2012, as a lieutenant in the Marine Corps, he began teaching Marines this method. In 2017, Grant opened his first gym in Costa Mesa, California, and the Strength Co. was born. Ah. In 2020, during a major iron shortage, Grant sought to bring back quality manufacturing of Olympic barbell plates to America. His innovation, adapt adaptation, <laughs> and can-do attitude brought about the greatest plates made in decades. The plates were accurate, anti-fragile, and instantly became the go-to plates of hundreds of lifters at Massonomics <laughs> Gym. Um, you can find out more about uh, the Strength Co. and Grant's his uh, Grant's story at <laughs> thestrengthco.com. Uh, That's thestrengthco.com. Wow, I feel really smart that right now. That was a good ad. I feel... Yeah. I, that was good. Spoiler, that was an ad. That was... Like, you yeah, probably, that nobody actually realized it's, that... It's the, you know, the new form of advertising where you can't tell if you just... We're just digesting content, or if it was actually an ad there. That's you know, if it was okay. in a magazine, they'd have it down small and say, this is an advertisement. Right, right, right. Yeah. That's what we just did there. That was impressive. That's, I love that timeline. That was a lot of fun. Can't wait to read that again. No. Really get that down yeah. a little better. Next, hopefully, uh, I wonder if we could get like a Spud Ink timeline <laughs> and a uh, Fusion <laughs> SP timeline. You can only hope. You can only hope. Darren, we have some, um, I have to ask, did you ever get the... Uh, did you ever try the the white sauce? I you no, know, we were just talking about it tonight actually at my house. We might try it pretty soon, but we have not yet. Have you tried it? I did try it and I was kind of surprised. It was a flavor that I was not white. Was it I mean, vinegary? Kind of, yeah. Like kind of, yeah. Um cuz I had my mom a bit of a barbecue sauce expert. Right. She, yeah, she looked she it know. over and she's said vinegar I think is this up is there pretty, on the, p- pretty vinegar, you know, uh And like I don't, you know, usually like when you think like white sauces on meat, you're like is yeah. it ranch or like is it like some gravy-ish. type of gravy? Yeah. And it's, and it's definitely like neither one of those which it does some weird trick with my brain that the white sauce is not either one of those. All right. I thought it was it was good. It was it was definitely I would I would eat it again. It just like shocked me getting it cuz that was so not what I was expecting. Would you down. what could you compare it to? Is there anything? My wife was almost like it. Kind of, sort of reminds me of like, uh, um, like sort of like a coleslaw dressing a little bit, but that's still not even really accurate okay. because it is it is way more so like. So it's a really its own thing. Like, it does feel like its own thing, yeah. Okay. And maybe if it was a different color, I'd be like, no, no, this is just a barbecue sauce. Maybe yeah. it is the white thing messing right. with me that much, but um, it was good. I'm grateful we got to have it. Still, uh, still trying to wrap my head around it a little bit though. Oh well, 
maybe we'll all try it here soon and we can uh what'd you have it on i had it on pork okay i don't yeah. know if that's the preferred preferred meat for that or not I, it does have a chicken on the bottle it does but yeah. it does say pork on the bottle right think, too it so. does it does tanner this past weekend was a pretty uh pretty popping weekend for pretty brown lit. county around these parts. pretty lit as the kids say it was you could say very lit maybe even uh we had super super mega star nelly performing live nelly furtado <laughs> Not, not that one. Yeah. Uh, Who, who's uh, more famous, Nelly or Nelly I Furtado? I think probably Nelly. I think that I'm pretty sure Nelly. Furtado. To me, for sure, I would yeah. say Nelly, Nelly Furtado did put out some put Bangers. out some hits though. For, she did. She yeah. was. She had some things going there for a yeah. while, but uh, Nelly was in town, and <laughs> was, let's just say it got hot in here. It did get hot in here. Um, it was funny before we went to this concert. So this is our our local county fair. And I don't go to the concert ever because it's a country act. And I don't know. I don't know anything about country music. So it's like, well, I mean, I can go and I'll go and talk to people and have beer. Yeah. I can also do that. Not spending a lot of money on a ticket <laughs> right. for something. I have no idea. Right. So I usually don't go, but this was okay. Nelly, I can do that. But before we went, we had a little pre-party and um, the party before the party. We had a little party before the party. And, and let's just say it got hot in there. It did also <laughs> get hot in there. But I had a little party thing that some of the, uh, my wife's younger sister was there and uh, they're in there like their mid twenties. So they're not like they're way younger than us, but she had some of her friends come and I said, fellow friends, let me show you something here. And I, let me show you the light. I brought them, I showed them two cans of bang and they're like, yeah, bang. I'm like, no, it's bang seltzer. Like (laughs) what? Yeah. Yeah. Blowing their mind. Like how much caffeine is in it though? I'm like zero. They go, What? And um, they were actually they loved them. They were actually like thinking I had some like witchcraft that I made this bang yeah. seltzer. And I'm like, whoa, what ga- what gas station did you get this out in town? I'm like, did you it say came you had from, it shipped? In? It was shipped from Ohio. And they're like, that's a whole story in itself too. <laughs> yeah, you know? So yeah. uh, people were people were like their minds were blown. But on the topic of that bang, uh, <laughs> friend of the podcast Scott Dodds did send me a picture. I saw that too. Yeah. Uh, bang does make vape. Cartridges, that seemed I real, I think, right? That's what I, I, I told him. I'm like, ha, ha, ha. I literally cannot tell if this is like a, yeah. a dumb like Photoshop yeah. meme or if this is real. And he said, no, these exist at the gas station down from my house. So that's ridiculous. Bang, you can get caffeine, alcohol, and vapes from them. They really, they really have the the, the complete cornered. the complete. Uh, Scott said they got they got their the vices pack. down. Yeah. yeah, they got them all right. there. Ah, oh, bang, bang, bang. <laughs> bang 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 yeah so and nelly was good uh i i mean i've definitely been to better concerts but f- i had i had a good time i yeah. had fun it was i didn't think you did a bad job i was in the vicinity but <laughs> you, not in the you were in the vicinity tanner uh, i caught up to you afterwards yeah i uh i really couldn't hear it i don't really don't know like i you know like i'm like hundreds of feet away and i really don't know what was going on in there yeah yeah, mostly a lot of music, <laughs> country grammar and stuff, <laughs> yeah. things like that. You yeah. know the classics. Yeah, um, I'm really thirsty. Are you really thirsty? Yeah. So let's do a sack segment. Leading oh, into that okay. Because okay. it's actually uh, it's all related here. So it's all connected. This is from our good friend Big Travis over at. Can you see? I it? was wondering why you had an Obsidian box. Yes, from Obsidian. And he says the first note at the beginning is boys refrigerate and open on podcast. So that's where the can segment comes in Okay, And then we have this really nice as far as, you know, we get a few cans in the mail. Yeah. This might be the nicest packaging we've ever got for cans before. And he also sent some other assorted goodies that he had around. So one of them is nose bleach. (laughs) Oh yeah. Of course. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to sniff that on air. Then he also sent, Oh, these sour strips. Yeah. Oh, damn. I might have to have a couple of those yeah. on there here. Yeah. Uh, Max mm. Tuning. I don't know if you know who yeah. that is. This I think is he runs company. this company. Yeah, that's what I was wondering. I thought I'd seen. Yeah. Um, that's funny, Max Tuning. That was kind of when I first got into fitness YouTube. I, he was could a guy. get him on the podcast. He was a guy I kind of sure, followed. Yeah, and yeah. I'm like, ah, oh, actually watch a little bit of that and you kind of get burnt out. Yeah, that. yes. That's kind of anyone that vlogs. Just that's... watch it a little bit and you get over it. And then he sent us some of his uh, high quality stickers yep. here. He's got the... Uh, you know what that is. Yep. I like these. These are magnets. What are they? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, the little, uh, and a magnet, the little smelling. It's like twice the size of this actual yeah, smelling. That's salt really thing. cool. I like yeah. that. And then 
This one a la NASA. Um, I like this one, the Reefer Madness. Mm -hmm. And then the The Ammonia. Supreme style. And then this one. Ah, the Van Damme. Yeah. Uh, What is that? Uh, Not Rot. Not Van. uh, Not. Jean Claude Van Damme. Who is this guy? Bloodsport. Blood Why can't sport. I think there of his name? Like, yeah. What is his name? Damn it, Tanner. Um, that's silly that we couldn't think of that. I bet there's so many people listening right now that oh, know they're this doing answer. that damn thing that they do where they're like, "Those idiots! I totally yep. know more about them than <laughs> most on most things." Because I'm sitting at home in the comfort of my own house and not uh, recording a podcast. Um. We better just get to the bottom. Oh of it. my god, Tanner! I thought you were gonna. Oh, yeah, Jean Claude Van. Damme. Oh yeah, that is the Van Damme. Who am there. I okay. thinking of? What's the other guy? Um, Patrick Swayze. No, 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 no. He he was also kind of like Bruce a. Bruce Lee. Uh, no, 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 no. Chuck Norris. No, he was a white guy that kind of tried to be like the whole karate master thing, and he had. I think he was on like a cop show late, like in more recent years here. The hell is his Batista. name? Batista. No, God, I cannot <laughs> think of his name. He looks like Dan from Street Fighter. If that makes it easier for anyone, I I'm pissed. I can't think. Batista. Of it. Again. <laughs> okay, there it is. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Anyways, let's get to this can okay. here. Uh, do we have to close our eyes to drink it, or do we just look at the can and, and take it all in? What do you think? I don't know. I don't know. Mm. Like it's not. Maybe it's not as fun when we both don't know what it is, though. Maybe we should, should. Can we both try not to look at it? Okay. Okay. I'll just. Oh, well, wait a minute. I got to see. Or do we need to look at it? Oh, I think we might need to look at this. (laughs) Oh. Whoa. Whoa. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay. What in the world is that other than really cool? So (laughs) this cap is something else, man. Okay, so we have like what it appears to be. I would call this a pounder, like a 16-ounce aluminum can Yeah. with our... Uh, obsidian ammonia label wrapped around yeah. it and like uh, labeled on the top and but it's like a knurled cap on top yeah. of this thing which it's, is well this really looks cool. like a tire yeah oh a tire kind of like a knurling pattern yeah. too you could see yeah. even um okay so do we screw this off yeah screw off screw the frig off oh, oh. just pop oh oh <laughs> oh. oh this is really cool oh look inside oh uh, baby Okay, wow. so this little cap, do you see it says lift hard, live easy, massonomics with the logo? That's insane. That's insane. And also the fact, okay, so this lo- this cap is has to be like 3D printed. Yes. It has like a knurled pattern. You lift the cap up. Inside, there is one perfect little capsule of ammonia inhalant yeah. designed to fit into this thing. Like the very edges of it fit in so perfectly. And that then around, so cool. the, around the outside of the cap, it says lift hard, live easy at Massonomics and the Massonomics logo is sitting there. Wow. That is really cool. Okay. And we haven't even got to the can yet, Tanner. And that the way that cool. pops on is Well, just, yeah. And that's like, it's a, like a reusable top yeah. essentially at the, you know. That is amazing. All right. Let's go for this beverage. All right. Now. Let's see what's in the beverage, you know. Okay. Sensing alcohol. Mm-hmm. Is wow. it like a lemony beer? Um, yeah, I would guess like a lemon, like almost, maybe even a sour of some kind, right? Right? Yeah, I don't know. We're never going to know, are we? I don't know. Is it possible to get this label off? Let's see. I think I got a little, I think I got it started here. Okay, I'm getting it started here. Okay. I'm saying, yeah, like a lemon sour of some kind would be my best guess. And this says, oh, okay, okay. What we actually have here is, well, Tanner, I can tell you there is a picture of a lemon on, on the can. Okay, that makes so sense. So we're not completely off. It's making sense so far. Um, you know, Travis, uh, I don't know if he knows this, but his labels are actually quite sticky. They don't come off very easily. This is really cool, though. Steam so. whistle lemon shandy. Okay. Well, okay, I'm going to spill this thing all over me if I try to get the whole thing well, off. But now we know at um, least. That's what it is. Wow. Mm. Good stuff. Um, beer's good. Cap is amazing. This cap is freaking amazing. The cap, I give it a 10. This a might 10. be the coolest cap I've ever seen. Yep. That is really, really cool. Wow. Um, 
the beer? I'll give it a three and a half. And then you've always got this ammonia handy for whenever you might need it. It's like the break in case of an emergency. Thing. Yeah. So cool. That is really ah. cool. Okay. I'm going to, I'm going to get going on these sour strips. A little yeah. Bit here, Tanner. Um, we did have, uh, so yeah, we had a drop. Yeah, is that what you're going to say? Drop. Yes, exactly. And you're wearing one of the shirts right there, right? Yeah. Massonomics gym tee. So this tee, you know, we've, we've been saying we haven't had a tee that really pops. <laughs> No, no, no. We, we've been <laughs> popping hard, but we haven't had a tea for like, that's like represents the gym, you know? Right. Not a lot of people have a gym. We got a gym, but we didn't have a tea that really like said the gym. Right. So we got the Massonomics gym tea. You got the skull and the left chest, big print on the back. I think it looks really good. We've had the banner in the gym for a yep. couple months now. So it's nice that we finally got this on a t-shirt. I love the gym tee. It's got the Aberdeen it's, SD across mm-hmm. the rocker on the bottom. Yeah, you you can you let really people know like you're a world traveler when you yeah. have the Massonomics gym tee and it says Aberdeen SD on yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. They'll say Aberdeen San Diego. Never heard of it. Yeah, like, no. Nope. <laughs> Think again. Nope, that's two cities in a row. <laughs> it is. Up next, though, we have the raw power tee. And this thing has got those. It's got those. Uh, Speaking of pop. It does pop. It this pops one, This hard. one really does pop. This has got those Sorry retro. Sorry the audio's popping too much. You can't. <laughs> snap, crackle, pop. Yeah. This has those retro band vibes for sure. Band T vibes. And we got the Massonomics name big up top with the Buffalo busting on through and raw power across the bottom. This is just, it's a fun shirt. Yep. It's on a red tee. It looks awesome. I'm having fun just looking at it. I'm, I'm really excited to wear that one around because it looks so damn good. And... What drop would be complete without something not for your upper body? We have Can't the leave those legs out of the equation. the Massonomics lift shit shorts in maroon. What, what? they maroon make that shorts? color? So yeah, those are pretty cool. Yep, it's our classic lift shit logo on the champion mesh shorts that you've all come to know and love. I'll be curious. These, uh, you know. We're not saying that these are like limited edition, those one right. of a hundred or anything no, like you, that. No, these don't come with the card. But, but I don't. We also don't know. We, you know, we might not keep them in right. stock forever. Right. But uh, I'll be curious to see how these things actually move. Yeah. I, I mean, I don't think they're going to sell out in forty minutes. <laughs> that would that would kind of shock. I mean, if they did, I would love it. That'd be great. Well, but yeah, uh, we won't complain. Um, that would kind of shock me if they did. But they are pretty cool. They are, and they are great for lifting shit. <laughs> nothing says you lift shit like a piece of apparel that says, that says lift, lift shit. shit on it yes you uh gotta make things obvious for everyone so make sure you get in on those and the other breaking development tanner the people the people oh yeah the people That's right maybe didn't know they wanted it and they got it and that is the massonomics discord now yep. you might be saying I don't ha- I don't know what those words even meant that you guys just and said there. I would say that and before <laughs> so, this. So, some of you know exactly what we're talking about right away, but um, Discord is basically an app for talking, chatting, communicating, and I, most people that play video games, I believe, are probably familiar with it. Uh, but more more brands and companies are starting to use it for kind of like their own little personal chat room. And we decided, you know what, we want a fun place for Massonomics people to just. Talk Massonomics Toss stuff Mac- or whatever yeah. or whatever's on their mind. Yeah. And so if you are a Massonomics podcast supporting member, you will get the invite now automatically once you purchase that membership. You'll get an invite to join the Discord. It's members only. And once you're in, you'll find a pretty, pretty vibrant community in there. <laughs> <laughs> there is. We already have a number of uh, users that have adopted it and, and we're, we're running with we're it. We're a, a little, as of, as of talking right now, we're a little over 24 hours in and it's been a lot of fun. Yeah, there's, yes. a, there's a lot of banter back and forth yeah. uh, uh, regarding mostly things Massonomics, but even some other things too. Yep. Uh, if you're wondering who's in, it's a, a lot of the people that you see commenting on Instagram. Yep. It's it's been a lot of fun though. We are also kind of so it's open to our supporting members. That's how you would get in. It's also open to the sponsors of our show, which is kind of a fun thing. So it mm-hmm. gets you a chance to get in there. And uh, for example, you read the strength co ad with well, Grant. You can talk to Grant and tell him what you think about uh, his timeline, which is really funny because yeah. just today someone suggested that the strength co ad should have a timeline. And Little did bing, they know it was it was waiting for him. 
And uh, we're giving them we're giving them first dibs on when the exact moment the drop is coming. So if you're one of those people that doesn't like missing out, well, get in there. You'll know that. Uh, they might even have a little sneak peek as to what's coming next. Yep. And they also get uh, a heads up on who the guest is too. So yep. when we're talking to John later today, we uh, we had some questions that came from the from the Discord community, <laughs> from the yep. Discord community, on some really heavy hitting topics that they wanted John to cover. So it is a pretty cool thing that you do get in return for your supporting membership. Now, yeah, I do think it's pretty cool. It is pretty cool, and we'll also throw this out there: if you do sign up, there is a discount code involved too. Yep. So we're not necessarily sell like don't just sign, just don't. Don't just do it because there's a I mean, you could. Like, that kind of suck. Yeah. But you could. We can't stop No, you, no. It's, it's just not very, like, it's just not even worth it. I'm just telling you, like, yeah. don't even do it. It's not worth it to just, for the discount code, like, um, do that. Like, if that, may that could be the thing that sets you over the edge, maybe, that you're yeah. like, oh, the rest of it sounds okay. And, like, okay, there's, there's yeah. a discount code. But, uh, I mean, the Discord alone. This oh, alone should should get you. That's going. more valuable than the discount. Code As you can imagine, eyes. there's fun emojis waiting for you ah, inside there's there. A, there's a apple growing. Pie emojis. Have you picked, this, have you noticed there's been some additional uh, emojis? Uh, in there's there? there's requests for an emoji. It gets <laughs> added. I think we have we have apple pies, JD Powers, <laughs> Lacroix, we got Lacroix, some Lift cool shorts, beans, go to uh, plates, the go to plates. It, yeah. It's all there. So uh, the the natural reaction to any comment is it's just sitting and waiting. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Be like, ooh, I give that one lift yeah, short. You know, it's a great comment when yeah. You your comment yeah. has four lift shorts on it and two, two cool beans two, 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 a, a and power. It's like, apple yeah. pie. Yep, that comment is really resonating with people. So <laughs> it's been a lot of fun seeing that in just a matter of a day. It's really, really growing and getting a life of its own. It's really popping off. It's like an Ellie concert. <laughs> it's, it's getting hot in there, isn't it? It's getting hot in here <laughs> in the Discord. Tanner, there was a world record bench attempt yep. this past weekend. Sadly, we have to say attempt because it was not yep. successful, but I didn't actually catch it. You did, I believe, didn't you? Yeah, I saw it on somebody threw it up on YouTube there. Uh, big uh, Julius went for the 800 pounder and he, I think he threw out like the first pitch at the Cubs game. Maybe, oh, did he really? Something like that. That's I saw cool. a picture. I'm not positive on that. I think that maybe he did. I'm not positive about that. Um, but he attempted the 800 pound bench. He got it, I would say, two-thirds of the way up. Oh, really? Something like that. Uh -huh. and, and couldn't get it two-thirds, you know, 60%, 70% up and couldn't get it. Let me bust me off a, one of those. Let me see if that's any good. You um, know, really sour, chewy candy is not the best on uh, air. It's our Starburst thing. Yeah. Um, mm. He did end up taking a break and trying it again. Oh, he did. And the second t attempt didn't go as yeah. well. And... That's really no surprise to anyone. Usually, that second attempt is. Ooh, that's uh, that's always hard. But I think from what I saw, you know, Julius wasn't making any excuses about it. He just just didn't get it. Yeah, I mean, that's not going to be there every day, right? It's... Right. Well, it's never been there for anyone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's not going to be there any day. Technically, it hasn't been there ever and on any day. Mm -hmm. The other thing to watch out for now, though, is this of uh, this guy. From I don't know what country and I don't know what name. You've probably all seen him now on Instagram or Built wherever. Built like a freaking tank. To see if he'll give Julius a run for his money, you know. I suppose now the thing is, like, which one of them is going to, you know, it's... Do uh, it first. You're right. I mean, he's even got to be getting just... He's going to be just close to just tying Julius' record here soon. I would think. I mean, got to do it in competition and everything, yeah. which can be a different animal, but... Mm hmm what do you think of the sour stripes? <laughs> I like them. Like I'm, I'm still always a chocolate first kind of guy. Me too. But I do like these things though. These are, they, I, uh, I am very much a chocolate first. There's uh, enough of just like a flavor explosion yeah, here that it is like two of these is like, all right, I'm good. I yeah. got two of those. I'm, I'm great. That I'm great. amount you gave me right there. Was that one thing? That was that one. They're kind, oh, of, they're kind of long. That was a good amount for me, yeah. honestly. Yeah. But. I say two. I mean, I could, I could eat like a lot of these. Oh, I just, yeah. I just feel really shitty out there. That's the thing. Like, I actually do feel, not that I'm a health nut in the way I mm -hmm. eat, but I don't eat a lot of just things that are just straight up like sugar is the main ingredient of mm -hmm. them. So I do notice when I eat stuff like that, if I eat too much of it, I will feel shitty almost within not too many minutes later. I almost mm -hmm. have like a just, 
feel like shit for a while from it. But, oh, I'm just living the life yeah, right now, yeah, Tanner. No yeah. one can stop me. <laughs> <laughs> just pounding back the sour strips. Oh, baby. Um, what, get, how many JD powers did you give this? I think, uh, I, I, think I said three and a half. I said three and a half for this. I'm typically not... Uh, Lemon usually isn't my go-to choice for for beers. I'd give it a three. Yeah, it's not. It's it would be a one and done situation for you me. know. Someone in the in the Discord had mentioned something about Bud Light seltzers, and I forgot to say this actually. I had my first ever Bud Light seltzer like a couple weeks ago. It was a peach. I don't know if it was peach or peach lemonade. It was actually really good. I've never. I don't even really care for seltzers a whole lot, but that one was really was good. I would, I would drink a lot of those. So yeah. If you're ever, uh, if you ever, if you ever looking and there's a peach one waiting for you, I recommend it. Don't turn it down. Do not ever. You know what else you shouldn't turn down? Uh, training from Hybrid Performance mm. Method. The Hybrid Strength Coach app is here, and it's stacked with the most popular hybrid training programs, coaching videos, exercise demonstrations, and instructional images to ensure your technique is on point. World-class training programs designed by the greatest minds and strength delivered straight to your mobile device. The Hybrid Strength Coach app sets a new standard for the industry, providing a streamlined platform for athletes of all backgrounds and putting the power of the strongest team in your hands. The Hybrid Strength Coach programs include access to program-specific private Discord communities for live access we to real-time feedback. We private Discord community. That's true. Taking a page out of the old hybrid <laughs> playbook. Um Live access to real-time feedback from the hybrid coaches. Visit them at hybridperformancemethod.com. Uh, so just cliff notes of that. It's an app that you're going to have on your phone with all these training programs that hybrid has always been known for, but now you have a, the convenience of an app right in the palm of your hand and access to all the uh, coaching videos and exercise demonstrations that they've thrown in there to simplify it for you. So it makes the whole process Pretty streamlined and manageable for almost anyone. The best part about all of this, discount code MASS, M-A-S-S. That'll save you 5% on any of this stuff. Uh, their training programs, their app, nutrition, programming, any of that, 5% off with discount code MASS. Yeah, buddy. That's the kicker. Always a kicker. Yep. Were we going to talk about my list, our, our list this week? I think we should. Okay. Who's in? Who's out? Who's been snubbed? Who's been? I didn't pre- prepare a new rap, um, <laughs> talking rap about lists this week. So you just have to remember last week's if you can remember back that far. But so what we have, this is our annual list we put out of the best strength training podcasts. Wait, is filling this the, the airwaves. fourth edition? Yeah, I think this is probably the fourth year that we've uh, updated this. I don't know. We don't necessarily update it every year. Like it's not like it's uh, not like uh, it's August a, we update it's it. It's been three hundred and sixty-five yeah, days. This yeah. must be. I mean, I, I think sometimes. I, I don't know. Did we go a year and a half this time? Maybe probably. It's yeah. been quite a while. I think since we've updated it. It is originally the top ten. And it's still named that just because it's a good name. But there's a few more than 10 on this Ooh, list at this we point. we slipped a couple. Do you yeah, think anyone's a, actually noticed that? Um, it does explain in there just in case people well, do notice it. Well, but does anyone it. read that part, honestly? No, though, yeah. no. They would just... Most people don't even read the article. They just see the Instagram post and then argue about something on <laughs> that without even <laughs> yeah, reading the yeah. article whatsoever. <laughs> yeah. Um, but to run down the list, actually just so, some of the criteria so people know we... Talk about the knowledge that they're putting out. That's important sometimes. Mm-hmm. Uh, humor. I think in my eyes, that's that's important. I like something that can get, get a laugh out of me. Uh, audio quality is important. <laughs> uh, mm-hmm. If it sounds like shit, it's really hard to listen it to it for a long time. To, yep. yeah. It's exhausting. Uh, production value. That kind of goes along with audio quality. But is there also video that goes along with it? What else are they doing to improve it for you? Uh, guests is it a show with guests it doesn't have to be but uh, if they are is it something that's interesting to the community and then one of the biggest ones to me probably as far as being on this list is just consistency are they putting out a show once a week once a month that's, they used to do it now it has been four months without it if you suggest it's hard to be a, a fan of anything yeah. when it's not there. exactly if you suggest something that should be on the list and they haven't rec- put an episode out for five months uh that would be my first response is well they're not on the list because they don't meet that's like almost the most basic criteria to be on this list is it needs to be yeah. an actively produced show mm-hmm. and almost all of these are like weekly shows some of them follow a little bit different schedule maybe some are bi-weekly 
some kind of approach it with a season approach. Yeah. But you're which more all than that's likely okay probably because getting it's a, a few a month. Right, and it's even if it's a season thing where you know they're taking take like a two month break off in the summer or something like that. That's like a known rhythm to it, mm-hmm. and I don't consider that that them not producing content at that point. You know, like that's just how their show goes. Mm-hmm. So to get to the list, Stronger by Science makes a return. They've been on here before. Uh, Greg Knuckles and Eric Trexler are the hosts of that show. Greg Knuckles has been a guest on our podcast, so make sure to check out Stronger by Science and check out our episode with Greg. Yeah. Next on the list, uh, old fan favorite, Massonomics Podcast. So I was worried we weren't going to make the cut nope. this year. I was pretty excited to see that. Of course, we're on there again. Um, shameless plug that way the <laughs> biggest reason for us to be on there so when people Google come across it, this we come yeah. in the top three like, they click yes, on us yes. and see us and say hey i'll listen to these guys yes uh and these are in no particular order other than i wanted you know we wanted ours to be relatively high in the list but not first so that's why we're second i mean we wanted ours to be <laughs> yeah, first on the yes, list, but that yes. looks a little too yes that's a little tacky. so we'll, we'll take be the number two spot here next one on the list two white lights this is an addition this year and um we just recently had uh, Mr. Fortino. Yeah, Mr. Fortino on our show. That was just a few weeks ago yep. uh, that we had him. And they, I think uh, they've really taken off with Two White Lights and it's become a pretty cool podcast. Very consistent, hitting a lot of it's the, the go to podcast for USAPL lifters. Absolutely is. So make sure to check them out. Uh, Long time. Returner Iron Radio. Maybe, maybe possibly one of the longest running podcasts on our list. It is the longest running one it on our okay. list. Absolutely. I think they're in like their 12th year. Mm. They're like got us doubled. Yeah. Which is wild. That doesn't happen by accident. No. Next one, returning Let's Get Stupid podcast. Tom and Tom have been continuing to pump out a weekly episode. They're very adamant about not missing a week and they have stuck to that. They, they and kudos get it. to them. They know because, what it's about. Yeah. They'll do it like uh, they'll. Because I think theirs is they release on Wednesdays and they'll release uh, at eleven fifty five p.m. on a Wednesday <laughs> night if they have to, just to like not miss yeah the Wednesday. And I'm well, like, well, it is like you gotta yeah. keep the streak alive. Yes, you know? uh, Elite FTS Table Talk with Dave Tate, of course. Uh, Dave's also been on the uh, our podcast mm-hmm. since the last time we talked about this, but he's been on this list uh, before, and everyone knows Dave Tate. Hybrid Unlimited, a return to the list. One of the sponsors of the show just talked about Hybrid. Steffi and Hayden. Uh, Umso with Matt Vincent, also been on our podcast before, also returning to this list. 50% Facts with Silent Mike and Jim McD. Perennial favorite on the list. Starting Strength Radio, of course, with Rip. Return to the list. Mm -hmm. I like this picture. Always a good picture of him, him wearing the Don't Curl in Me shirt. shirt, Yep. Iron Culture, I think, was one that was more recently added, and that's with Omar Isaf, Isaf and Eric Helms. Mm-hmm. Uh, they, ton of guests, pumping out a ton of content, very um, top-notch stuff that they're doing, I would say. Barbend Podcast, which... Uh, We've been on. Yeah, we would make sure to check out the episode with Tommy this year on the Barbend Podcast. Do not miss that one. And that's the list. That was a fun list. Yeah. A lot of... There's a, you can draw a lot of co- lines of correlation. I think almost everyone on the list has either been on our show or we've been on theirs or some combination. But it's we, because these are active podcasts in this space. That's true. Like it's, it's, yeah, that's exactly right. We've been on Iron Radio. Um, we do have an open invitation from Dave Tate. at Tate, if he, they, uh, The guy that helps him record just mentioned this last month that we have an open invitation that whenever we're in Columbus, we're welcome on to table talk, okay. but uh, we have to get there, of course. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's get stupid. I think it would be very fun oh, to get on that, that one. That would be a lot of fun to be on that one. Um, it would be really fun to be in person with them mm-hmm. to be on that. Matt Vincent, we also have an open invitation to be on the UMSO podcast if we get down to St. Louis. We've been on the 50% Facts. We've been on Starting Strength Radio. We've been on Bar Bend, Iron Culture may be the one on the list that we have not had any crossover with. I'd like to get both Omar and Eric on our yeah. show in the future. So. You could say they're on our list. They are on our list. <laughs> we'll be checking you guys off next. Old Billy Madison checkoff list. <laughs> Boy, am I glad I killed that guy. <laughs> <laughs> Bingo. That's our list. Tommy, did we have anything else that we needed to run down before we get to our guest here? Mm. I think the 
rundown's probably that's about pretty much done. most. We ran it all down for the I most think part. We did a lot of running. I think I think we have some. I think it's time to hear a little message from our guest pretty quick here. Excellent. Uh, one note before that. In 2009, Merritt <laughs> uh, had a dream about supplements. In 2009, September, Fusion Sports Performance was born. I actually don't know about those dates. I'm just making those up. I was um, curious if yeah. that was actually no. a real. In 2010, Merritt's drive, focus, and <laughs> hunger for the best chocolate of some sort protein developed into the chocolate of some sort Fusion SP protein powder. Um they offer two pre-workout options over there. They got the Super Soldier, you got the Mad Titan pre-workout. Both have proven ingredients. Super Soldier uh, is more of your moderate pre-workout. Mad Titan's your to the if you want to go inside, di- dial it up to if eleven. If you want to literally almost dial go it crazy. to eleven, what do you think about <laughs> dialing it up to eleven? It's, is it necessary or does the skip? Well, why, why does the I mean, sometimes really, it go to eleven? Is really anything necessary if we're right. going to talk about what's necessary? It, I think it's probably yeah. a good idea. But I mean, is is it like Should is it just ten? 10? Just be louder? Yeah, well, is ten the loudest? And there isn't really a. Lot. Mm, it's mean, like giving something one hundred and ten percent. Is that really a? There might be something to it. Yeah, might be something to it. They also have healing factor post workout. It combines BCAAs with a full serving of creatine, monohydrate, and other great ingredients to help maximize your efforts in the gym, build muscle, and recover fast. Talking about their whey protein isolate, it not only tastes great; it has twenty seven grams of protein per scoop, zero fat, and lower no carbs. Uh, comes in vanilla ice cream, chocolate fudge. Frosted cinnamon roll flavors. Um, most of their orders are shipped within one business day, and every Fusion Sports Performance product comes fully backed with a 30-day money-back guarantee. Go to FusionSP.net, and here's the important part. Make sure you jot this down. Pull out your notepad. This will be on the test. Use code MASS, M-A-S-S, to save a huge 20% on your order. That will be on the test. Don't mess that part up. Yeah. You're... For this test, you're going to need to know all the dates of the Texas Power Bars timeline. <laughs> now, all the dates of the uh, strength uh, go timeline. Strength go. You need to re- be able to recite the Spud Inc. web web address with all the appropriate dashes and and also slashes. Know, and then know all of the promo codes. Yes. To- yep. That's what you. That's what's on the test. Well. <laughs> How many should we get to our guests? I think we got a lot of good stuff to talk about I, with our guests. I so have a feeling yeah. we're in for something here, uh, so we better get to it. Okay, cool. What's going down, brother? How you doing? Big John, this is uh, Tanner and Tommy. We got you on the Massonomics podcast. How's it going? What's up, John? Well, that's what's going down, fellas. Let's fucking go. Let's uh, have some fun. We're we're ex- we've been excited to get you on. We've been talking about it all week. I uh, really, I think you said you saw something on Travis's page there and uh, saw us through there. So we were very excited when you got a hold of us about that. Yeah, absolutely, fellas. The bottom line is, <clears throat> you know, we're all connected. You know, we all love doing the same shit. We all go about do it different ways. And we all share experiences and we all basically try to help each other get better. And that's what it's all about, you know? Absolutely. I... I and I don't know, maybe Tommy, you're the same. I think the first uh, where I came across to you was probably um, the first time I, I, I think I knew about you a little bit before that, but the first time I really got into you is when you were on the PowerCast for the first time. And I don't know, it was probably like five or six years ago. <laughs> yeah, that's or? What I, I think oh, so. yeah. Oh, yeah. We're talking about that would have been like 2013 or 14. Okay. Yeah. 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 And at the time, like, yeah, I think it was the same thing. It was like, I kind of knew who you were, but on there, it was like, wow, this guy has got like something going on here. He's bringing the energy. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, the, the thing about it is, you know, is, you know, the, that was back when, when Mark's show was just, it was, it was just literally just getting started, you know? And, uh, I mean, it was, it was great. It was just, it was just raw. And, you know, Mark was like, look, let's get on those have some fun. Let's entertain these people. Cause that's the thing, you know, it's great to get some great information, but if you can fucking be entertained and laugh your ass off of the process, now yes. you've got something, you know? Yeah. And that's what it's all about. You know, telling funny stories, you know, I got zero problem pulling my fucking pants down, so to speak, in front of an audience. <laughs> <laughs> because because we all, you know, the bottom line is, 
We all have shit that fucking embarrass the shit out of us. But when you got the fucking balls to lay on the table so everybody can see the shit that you went through, it helps other people realize they can pull their pants down too. Because in essence, if we all had balls enough, we'd walk walking around fucking butt naked. You know, yeah. you wouldn't be yeah. fucking covering up anything, you yeah. know, <laughs> shit junk could be flopping around in the fucking wind. You know what I mean? And, but, but everybody's so, everybody's so fucking self-conscious and scared thinking that, I mean, get drunk. Don't get me wrong. Fuck. I was one of these motherfuckers. Jesus Christ. <clears throat> There's a certain point in your life where you start to realize, you know what? All this shit that happened to me was my fucking biggest blessing. And that's when you start to embrace it. Yeah. And until somebody helps you see that side of it, you know, you spend a lot of time trying to cover up the shit that, that, you know, at the time, I mean, I went through a lot of things. Like, let me, let me tell you a story. This is one of those things that fucking haunted me for decades. And then I finally got to the point, like, holy shit. This is also one of those things that fucking allows me that allowed me to be me. And I wouldn't fucking trade it for a minute, man. I mean, Jesus Christ is a fat little boy. I would have fucking cut off my left fucking pinky to do any one of the three careers I did, let alone all fucking three. You know what I mean? So, but, you know, so I'm a fucking fat little boy. I'm a late fucking bloomer, right? And I'm talking late bloomer like I didn't have fucking puberty until I was 17, you know? And so <clears throat> freshman high school, you know, that's a big fucking year going into the, you're going into the big boys, yep. you know? Mm-hmm. Yep. And... Fucking A, this is back in the day when football practice, the coach said, hey, everybody takes a shower. Now, if a fucking coach said that, the son of a bitch would be in fucking prison. <laughs> you know? <laughs> but the coach, says, the coach says, everybody takes a shower, we run extra gasters tomorrow. And the fucking, you know, the fucking older guys are like, everybody gets in the shower, goddamn. And I'm like, oh, fuck. I'm thinking to myself, I'm thinking to myself, Jesus Christ, I'm hope. I'm not the fucking only one. And what I mean by that, you'll understand here in just a fucking minute, because <laughs> in fucking in, in eighth grade, I was just one of the few that still didn't have any fucking hair in his cock. <laughs> well, <laughs> God damn it. I fucking climbed into the showers as a fucking freshman. We're talking a freshman team, a, J, a JV team and a fucking varsity team, 150 some kids. I'm the only fucking kid that climbed into that was single fucking hair in his cock. <laughs> now, talk about it was just we're talking about like just it. My skin was burning because I was so fucking embarrassed. Yeah, right. Yeah, yep. And and then of course you know I was the last one in there because I was scared to death. There's no fucking towels. So now I'm fucking. I got running around with a fucking little hairless fucking dick, and I can't even find a towel to cover myself up. You know. <laughs> <laughs> so, and then anyway, I mean, literally that, that fucking, that's experience. It fucking, it burned inside me so deeply. I mean, I remember it, I, it disappeared for out of my memory bank for years. And then when I got a little older, I started to realize, you know, holy shit. Yeah. I was a fat little kid. I fucking, and I really wrong. I got no fucking bad stories. I wasn't molested. I wasn't, there was no fucking problems. I was just a fucking, I was a glutton for fucking cookies and ice creams all it was. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> but that kind of shit right there, that's the stuff that fucking, you know, I got picked on, you know, I was scared of my own shadow, but what it came down to was I had to fucking work my ass off just to keep my head above water. And so I'm fucking going to school, running before practice. I'm doing all these things, just trying to be average, right? And that's the fucking shit right there that made me who I am. Because the bottom line is, you you put me across from another man, and I'll fucking outwork his ass. That's just the bottom line. I, I may not fucking win, but I'll fucking outwork you. And that right there is what made me who I am. And all the things that you go through, all the fucked up shit that happens to you that you think is life fucking altering in a negative way, it's life altering in a fucking good way. You just don't know it yet. <clears throat> so I think now, that's a good way to look at it. Yeah, too. That's, yeah. Yep. Fuck yeah, man. And, and now that I've actually fucking made something for myself, I'm so fucking happy 
to go around and pull my pants down, so to speak, so everybody can see, so everybody can see. Well, hey, you got hair well, on your cock. Well, now. So. That's right. No. Well, actually, to be totally honest, I, I shave, I shave the motherfucker yeah. now. Yeah, that's so that's no ironic. Yeah, yeah, from fucking fifteen to forty-nine, and Jesus Christ, nothing's changed. I'm just instead of being a fat fucker now, I'm yoked. No, but I like, still oh, got. I, still I wish that hair, hair would grow cock. all over my cock. That's right. That's right. Now, now we got to. Sick and uh, use a fucking weed whacker to get all this fucking hair off me, you know. <laughs> yeah, that's good. But, you know, but it's you know it's my ladies. You know, she's like Jesus Christ. You know, let's fucking cut some of that shit back. <laughs> you know, what, what's the the tree always looks bigger when you r- remove the bushes yeah. from around the? the oh, of course, yeah. of, of course. Uh, you know, and let's be honest, man. There's not a fucking guy on the planet that wishes he didn't have a bigger cock. <laughs> you, know? Yeah. Yeah. you know? Well, I got to tell you, man, I, I got to be on that level. I've been, you know, between straw man, between fucking wrestling and bodybuilding, I've been in a lot of fucking situations with fucking naked dudes. I mean, you go to get, you go to get, no, you go to get fucking sprayed, spray tan. Yeah, before a fucking IFBB show, you're talking 20, 30 fucking dudes at a world level, fucking yoked out of their fucking gourds. Walking around butt fucking naked, possibly a fucking sock on their cock. Yep. You know? <laughs> so, yeah. but let me tell you, I have seen a couple of fucking dudes, and I swear to Christ, it, it looks like a fucking baby's arm holding an apple. <laughs> you know? It's got a fucking it's got a fucking joint, you know, it's like <laughs> It's got a. It's like. It's like. What the. Fuck? What. What is that? That's not supposed to be attached to what, a person. Man. What happens to that thing when blood flows? Oh to it? Jesus yeah. Christ! Yo, fuck. You know. It's like holy shit. How do you control that thing when it gets upset? You know. <laughs> <laughs> Man, yeah. I mean, we're we're really coming out heavy hitting yeah. here. I, d- I didn't think we'd get to like the pants down part until yeah. maybe a little oh, bit you in. Gotta, you, just... it, you, listen, man, it's just like a fucking wrestle match. You've got to come out. Go, you got to yeah. do something like big that. to get I, their attention, yeah. baby. I think that makes you got to get you got to get the attention right up front. Then you got to kind of let the, the the crowd cool off a little bit, yeah. and then you fucking get them back up again. You know, <laughs> yeah. it's that's the way it's got to go. Well, you know, and Fuck. You, you did touch on it there, and I, I for anyone that doesn't uh, know about you as as well as we do, you've been IFBB bodybuilding pro, professional yep. strongman, professional wrestler, yep. and those are the yep. three careers that you all took to the a level that uh, a lot of people try for many years just to get to that level in any one of those things. You went there in all three. What What's the order there? What, what were you into first, and like what was the succession there? Because I'm not well, the that's a, that. Yeah, that's a fucking great question, brother. I'll go, I got to tell you, a lot of things in my fucking life just kind of happened as they were supposed to because strongman was my first career because that's a young man's fucking I, – I, at 49, I couldn't be competing at high level strong. No fucking way. I mean, there's a few people on the planet like Nick Best, yeah, you know, right. G, but, but I mean, we're talking about, you know, we're talking about, you'll see one of these people come along every few hundred years. Right. You right. know what I mean? Yeah. So you, you almost outlier. can't, you almost, yeah, you can't even really count Nick into, and I know Nick well, I mean, we competed together. He was coming in when I was coming out. Um, <clears throat> anyway, but, uh, but the bottom line is, is that my strongman groups first, and I was one of those guys that, you know, even that, even when I was a fucking pathetic little hairless, uh, hairless cock motherfucker, I still had some fucking decent strength about me. I was the, as a junior in high school, I was the second guy in my class uh, to squat 405, which was yeah. pretty fucking good yes. for, you know, you know, <clears throat> and, and so, you know, basically I, I was always fairly strong. Um, didn't always look it, which is, this is where my story kind of developed. So I, you know, as I told you, I'm working my ass off and I'm fucking getting strong and I'm getting big, but I was one of those guys that think, fuck, that's a big guy. And then you see him lift. You're like, fuck, he is so much stronger than he looks. Yep. And it was, dude, it was fucking crazy. My, my buddies and I, you know, I was up in college up in Portland, Oregon, and we would, uh, by my junior and senior year, it was just so evident that I was so much stronger than everybody else. We would just go into random fucking gyms, you know, and this had been like 1991, you know, and, uh, you know, we put fucking, <clears throat> you know, four plates on, you know, I'd fucking knock that off for fucking 30 reps, 
on a squat yeah. and people are like what, what the, the fuck is going, going on, on here yeah, yeah they're, they're, I mean people are coming and grabbing the fucking plates like these are fucking real plates <laughs> no shit <laughs> you know and then you know because nobody had ever seen anything like that before nobody was doing heavy fucking sets for high reps well you know in in my mind I always even as a fat little fucker I I mean granted if I was accepted, I probably would have had a different outlook, but I was not really accepted. So I was always marching to the beat of my own drummer because I didn't, I couldn't go hang out with the fucking crowd. You know what I mean? So I made my way. Okay. And I did that with training too. So I was always the fucking guy. Okay. Well shit, man. I'm, you know, four or five is such a big number when I was a junior. I just kept thinking, well, I just want to squat it more. How many more times can I squat it? So you know, I had all these like four, I had four plates, five plates, six plates, seven plates. How many times could I squat it? Those were my, my challenges, right? Now, granted the six and the seven plates didn't come in until later when I was doing straw man, but you know, ultimately I was fucking one of those guys that I was so much stronger than I looked and, but keep in mind, I, in, I look in the mirror, I'm still the fucking fat little boy. I haven't developed mentally even closer OS physically. <clears throat> and so Finally, one of my fucking buddies, um, this is my training partner for years. I was in, I was probably mid to late twenties. He was like, dude, it fucking pisses me off how strong you are, but why are you not doing something with this? Uh Every time we go to a gym, nobody can touch you on any lift. Why are you not doing something with this? And I was like, I remember at that point, I just started fucking kind of like looking into amateur strongman contests. And I was like, fuck, this is the guy I've been competing with my whole fucking life. He is one of my best friends still. And uh, he, he's like, look, he goes, I can't do it. You can. Will you go do this, please? And I'm like, fuck. All right. So I went and did my first strongman contest and uh, didn't know shit. You know, it just showed up. And uh, they, sh- they, thought I, they thought I was in the wrong spot. They're like, because even, even – I always look like a fucking bodybuilder. You know, I weighed in at like two – I was just barely the 275 class, but, you know, fucking with abs, you know, yeah, and yep. Willie Wessels was, uh, you know, this is back when Nash was one and Willie was like, dude, the bodybuilding contest is not here. And I'm like, no, I'm here. To- <laughs> anyway, so I won that contest and Willie was like, dude, you never competed before. You need to go get your pro card. So I listened to him, told, took his advice, went and bought my pro card, you know, a handful of months later. Um, so now two contests, I'm a, a two contests in I'm pro don't know shit, but I was just so fucking strong. I was able to kind of manage. And, uh, so then I, as a pro, I, I went to my first pro qualifier. Cause I mean, fuck who doesn't want to go to world strongest man? Jesus Christ. Absolutely. You know yep. who you, I mean, I just wanted to get on TV. It was like fucking a, you know, get me on TV. So I went, <clears throat> I went to my first pro qualifier. And I had to place in the top five to, to, to qualify for pro nationals, which I did. So my fourth ever fucking strongman contest, I got fucking Phil Fisher, you know, yeah. in the lane, in the fucking lane next to me, you know, I'm like, holy shit. And, and, you know, none of these guys knew who the fuck I was, you know, I mean, they're all very cool, but they were just they're basically, you know, some of the events I like overhead, the truck poles and the squatting and deadlifts. Maybe I was fucking just crushing, but they knew they're just waiting for me to hang myself on the events. I didn't know how to do. Right. right. <laughs> and that's exactly what happened. I think I placed eighth, <clears throat> which still for a fucking fourth ever contest, eighth in the fucking eighth in the country was pretty fucking good, you know? Mm-hmm. And, uh, so at that point I didn't go to, I didn't make it a world strongest man, but I did get uh, a lot of travel invites after that. It was almost like an A team and a B team top five, went to world strongest man. And then the, the, six through 10 went to a team competition in the Bahamas. So I went there fucking did well there. Got invited to, um, Hugo Girard's North American championship end of my first year. And I won that motherfucker. So my only pro fucking win as a strong man <clears throat> was my rookie fucking season. And I was thinking to myself, fuck, I got this made, man. I, I'm fucking good. Well, little did I know it's, that's not that fucking easy. Jesus <laughs> Christ. <laughs> you know, I mean, you, you, you always get those fucking flashes of fucking greatness, but you can't, you don't have, you don't get those every time you show up, you know? So 
anyway, I mean, I, from that point forward, I mean, I was, <clears throat> I was established. I was still learning. I was traveling a ton. I went to Willie Wessel's place a lot. Um, I traveled to a lot of, a lot of older pros so to them to kind of help me understand how to fucking do this shit, you know? And, uh, everybody was really cool. And by that time we were traveling together. And so it was a great fucking great career, man. I can't fucking come here. Here's a, here, here, this is a really interesting little side note that just tells you how bad I wanted it. So <clears throat> it was, the. Uh, Right at the tail end of my of my rookie season, I fucking hurt my back training deadlifting, and uh, I didn't realize how severe it was at the time. But I fucking ruptured a disc. Well, I competed on that fucking disc my whole goddamn career. I ended up rupturing another one right at the tail end of my career, and uh, so when I go and get surgery, they're like, "Yeah, you you've got one that's been ruptured. It looks like it's been here for." five, six years. And I was like, fuck, I remember that injury. I just didn't know. So, but the kind of pain that I was in was brutal, but I didn't give a shit. I was where I wanted to be. You're fucking kid. You're, you, you could have put a gun to my head and I wasn't going to stop. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, of course, unfortunately you start dealing with fucking painkillers and all the shit that comes along with staying at the high level. But fuck man, at that point I was trading my fucking soul to stay where I was because, you know, finally the fucking fat little boy, with no hair in his cock, fucking made it to the top, you know? <laughs> and so, anyway, so I had a fucking ripping career with Strowman. I loved every fucking minute. Strength is my true love. But uh, and at that point, this was also during the dot-com boom. I don't know if you guys remember that. It was just fucking money everywhere, startup companies. So I was actually making some decent money because I was the way I looked. You know, I had uh, an energy drink, an energy drink that – Fucking energy drink never even never even made it to the market, but they were get, all I had to do is wear their t shirt. I was a write off. They paid me three grand a month. You know, <laughs> I was wow. like, are you fucking kidding me? So I mean, I had a number. Of, yeah. I had a number of sponsors where I was making money. I mean, it wasn't like retirement money, but you know, it, it, was, it was pretty pretty fucking cool. You know, so and I had an agent because I had done some commercials and shit. Like I had, uh, actually I actually did a, a Super Bowl commercial. It was two thousand six Super Bowl. I was pulling a bus. Um, it was called Sports Heaven, ESPN commercial. Anyway, so that kind of shit was coming up. So I had an agent. And when I when I ended up doing my second ruptured disc, <clears throat> I went in to have them look at it. And they're like, look, we're going to fix this. But if you continue to do what you do, you're going to be done. And my agent's like, look, if you want to continue to make money, you're going to have to stop this. So what are we going to do? He goes, pro wrestling. I'm like, what? <laughs> Fuck, man. I was like, I was never even a fucking pro wrestling fan. I just like watching, the, you know, the Ultimate Warrior was my. I loved him because he was just a big yoked up motherfucker. I had no clue what they were doing in there. I just couldn't wait for him to flex his muscles. You know, I mean, just to give you an idea of how removed I was from a wrestling match and how it worked. I thought you when I when I first started looking into being a pro wrestler, I thought. You had to have a you were a ten count to be out. It's a three count. Oh yeah, right, right. <laughs> that's fucking boxing. Yeah, for yeah that's like boxing, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so anyway, so long and short of it is, I I went to this school where they teach you how to do it, um, out of like a three month fucking crash course. Um, my agent made a fucking completely false resume saying that I knew what I was doing. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds like, sounds like an agent that's looking out. For yeah. You. Oh, fuck. Yeah, man. He wanted yeah. to make some money too. Yeah. send it over to send it over to Japan because we knew there's no fucking way I was with as green as I was, I was going to get exposed. So I needed to go to Japan because they called strong style where they're, they're much more rough in the ring. So it would cover up the fact that I didn't know what the fuck I was doing, you know? Because in American style wrestling, you've got to hit somebody without actually hitting them. And you got to make right. it look like it was real. There's a bit of an art to that. Well, I wasn't fucking developing this art in three fucking months. You know, <laughs> so. But what I could do is understand how to fucking move around in there and fucking knock people down. And that's what I learned. So <clears throat> ended up doing, you know, I'm sure you guys have seen the way that wrestling works. You fucking these uh, guys, well, it's called the indie circuit. It's high school gyms, you know, 30, 40 fucking toothless people in fucking yep. seats, mm-hmm. you know. And so I ended up having to do about five of these because I, you know, you have to get fucking experience and you have to get, had to get footage. So I did a handful of those matches. My agent gets me a fucking deal in Japan, my seventh 
ever wrestling fucking match. It was a pay-per-view in fucking Kyoto, Japan. I was like, fuck, here I go again. This is the same fucking thing. <laughs> yeah. You know, I'm fucking scared to death, man. I'm just, it's just, it just reminded me of showing up to pro nationals, you know, and fucking Phil to my left in the fucking land of farmer's walk. I'm like, what the fuck is going on here? I, I was watching this guy on TV last year. Now I'm fucking in the arena right fucking next to him, you know? Well, same thing with fucking wrestling. The difference was I didn't know who the fuck who the fuck these people were. So I just went out and fucking did my thing, knocked people down and flexed my muscles, and it was enough. <clears throat> so next thing you know, I'm fucking a pro wrestler. <laughs> 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 and uh, it was fucking brutal, man. I have I mean fuck, I remember popping a bicep loose in the middle of a it was a 15-minute match, about three minutes deep. And you can't stop. It's televised. So I basically, I mean, can you imagine doing what you got to do in there for about 12 fucking minutes when you just, you knew you completely popped your bicep off? Yeah, no. Brutal. Yeah. yeah. But, that's it. but that's the thing. I mean, it's, it's fucking, it's, yes, it's predetermined, but the fucking shit is brutal, man. It was fucking, it beat me up. Man, goddamn. <clears throat> but uh, <clears throat> it was pretty killer. I mean, Jesus Christ, to be able to walk out in front of 50,000 fucking people. It's just like, holy shit. Where did the fucking, where did the fucking fat kid with their hair and his cock fucking pull? How did he pull this off? You know? <laughs> and so, yeah. So anyway, so I did, I, I was, uh, I wrestled for fuck. Well, let me give you a timeline. So my last strongman competition was spring of 07. I was in the fucking, I was in a match in the early part of 08. So less than a fucking, what, nine months, I'm fucking switched from high-level strongman to high-level wrestling. It was fucking just like, and keep in mind, the wrestlers were not fucking happy because here's this fucking guy. They're, they're grinding away, trying right. to get to that main event spot. Yeah, working their whole life. And all of a sudden, I'm just fucking, this fucking guy just shows up. I mean, I don't fucking speak the language. I don't fucking know what's going on. And I'm right in the fucking mix of it, you know? So I had a lot of fucking beefs with, with some wrestlers along the way because they were trying to run me off. You know, they wanted me the fuck out of there, you know? So there are plenty of times in the ring where you, you still have to carry out your outcome, but it gets fucking rough in there, man. <laughs> you know? I so, doubt that. Yeah. yeah. So basically uh, <clears throat> wrestling a fucking, I ended up smoothing everything out, having a fucking great career. Um, Ended up basically starting off with, uh, it's called IGF, um, then ended up going to New Japan, which was the, the biggest company over there. Although I was also working for a company called uh, Conseco Mundial in Mexico. So I was, because they were kind of, they were kind of sister companies. So they kind of passed me around like a fucking dirty dish towel, man. I was just, I mean, literally, I'd be in Tokyo, you know, for a couple of fucking matches and I'd get on a fucking plane and go to Mexico City. You know, I was like, Jesus Christ, you can fucking fly me across the fucking world for three days and then go back. Yeah. But that's just the way I was then. Keep in mind, I, I don't I'm sounding like a fucking little bitch here because what it's happening, you feel real fucking important, you know, <clears throat> and that's really what it's all about. You're you're getting shipped all over the place. You're making fucking money. You got merchandise. You can't complain. And uh, so anyway, long fucking short, man, it was a great fucking career. And then uh, end of 2013. Um, just like anything else that fucking comes to his course, you know, a strong man, I had an injury. I had to leave, you know, it was my best choice to leave fucking wrestling. They just, they just fucking don't renew you. <clears throat> and you basically have to fucking walk away with tails between your legs because you don't want to fucking leave. Who wants to be told they have to leave? Right. You know, I mean, it doesn't make a difference if we're fucking hanging out watching a fucking ball game. If you tell me, hey, John, you got to get out of here. I, I don't like that. Yeah. <laughs> Let alone you tell me I got to get out of here and I don't get all this fucking crazy lifestyle and these big fucking paychecks anymore. That's even worse. <laughs> you know, so anyway, I went home. Um, you know, it's fucking definitely had a hard time adjusting. You know, it was a few weeks of just – you know, pretty, just feeling pretty lost. But I knew at the same time, the juice was still flowing. So, you know, when I was in Strongman, I'd do interviews for oh man, you, you got the voice to be a wrestler. So I went, fuck, I went and became a wrestler. Well, then in wrestling, everybody's telling me, why, you know, why do you not do bodybuilding? 
well, fuck. So I came home and I guess it's time to body build. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so I did my first ever bodybuilding contest in spring of 14. So, I mean, I didn't take much of a break there. Um, so I got released in December 13 on the stage late spring. It was like the last weekend of uh, March. So it was pretty, pretty quick. Showed up. You know, so keep in mind, it's a regional. You know, it's North, Northern California. And uh, I was already 42 at the time. <clears throat> so I went into the Masters. I went into the Open. I just wanted stage time. And uh, <clears throat> I didn't really know what I was getting into because I, fuck, I just I didn't spend any time studying bodybuilding. It was just like, okay, this is the next step. I need to get myself in the best shape. And I need to pick a contest. And when I win, I could go try to get my pro card. <clears throat> keep in mind i've been sponsored my whole fucking career through both my careers so i'm you know i got all sorts of sweatsuits with my fucking name on it and shit like that so i come walking into this <laughs> i'm walking into this goddamn bodybuilding contest with an mhp fucking yeah. jumpsuit on <laughs> yeah if my name with my name under the fucking logo and everybody thinks i'm the fucking guest poser i'm like yeah. no i'm here to compete i mean the, the the promoters knew who i knew i was coming to compete but everybody else thought i was the guest poser I'm like, no this is this I'm, you know th- this this sweat jacket's from fucking from my strongman career like what today it was even worse at that point you know i mean i'm just talking i'm just yeah. talking gibberish to these people <clears throat> anyway once i got on the stage that's when I realized the difference between me and the other guys was just, it was just, the gap was so big. It was like, Oh my God. I mean, give me wrong. I was still focused and fucking going hard. But when the day's over and I start fucking looking back at the pictures, I was like, Holy shit. You know, cause I, it, in the moment you're focused on you, you're not really looking around. And, uh, but anyway, I met, uh, I won that contest just fucking bam. Um, a kind of a funny side note when I went out with the masters, you know, you're getting guys that are, you know, they're hobby, they're fucking hobby bodybuilders. You know what I mean? Guys that just barely got abs, you know, they're fucking 42, 43 years old and and, you know, God bless them. But then you got fucking me, you know, I I weighed in at like fucking 262, you know, (laughs) (laughs) it was just a fucking mammoth, (laughs) just fucking, you know, strided glutes, you know? And, uh, Anyway, so <clears throat> I ended up meeting there. I ended up meeting uh, Holly Rombot because uh, he was a promoter of that show. <clears throat> and I didn't even know who he was at the time. Um, he's telling me, he's like, hey, man, you, you got a lot of potential. It's your first show. You need to do this. You need to do that. And my buddy that was there with me, he goes, you know who that was? I said, no. He goes, that's Holly Rombot. I said, who the fuck's that? He goes, that's the fucking, that's the, the, the coach of Phil Heath. I said, Phil Heath, Mr. Olympia, Phil Heath. I said, yeah. I said, that fucking guy just came and give you some great advice and told you you got potential. That's, I just wasn't, I was, I didn't know enough about the sport yet to know who it would have been the fuck anybody was. Yeah. And so <clears throat> then I thought, well, fuck, I guess here we go again. So I showed up to a fucking nationals. I, he, what he told me was, he said, look, he goes, you got the USA's and you got masters nationals and they're a week apart. He goes, basically what's going to happen is this. He goes, you're 42. You can go to Masters Nationals. <clears throat> he goes, because this is what's going to happen. He goes, you're going to get a bunch of guys that go to the USA's that don't win that are 35, and they're going to show up at Masters Nationals. So you're going to see half of the super heavyweight class from the USA's at the Masters Nationals. He goes, you just go. You compete in the 35s. You compete in the 40s. He goes, you win either one of those. You're pro. And then you can compete in the open. He goes, you're big enough. You got the condition that's just – then you're good. He goes, and you can come and compete in my show at the end of the year. It was actually kind of making because his show is local where I live. So he was just trying to get another competitor into a show he was building. But anyway, <clears throat> so that's exactly what I did. So I showed up to fucking nationals, wiped out the 35s. Um, and keep in mind, I competed down because I didn't really care about my age bracket. I just needed some tough competition because I knew I was going to be competing against pros. So I wiped out the 35s, and 35 division is fucking tough. I mean, you got guys that, that are just a skosh off a of win in the USA's that are there two weeks later. So now I'm fucking pro bodybuilder, two fucking contests. And uh, <clears throat> again, I didn't realize I didn't realize what a feat that was, you know, because I, I did Dave Palumbo's podcast the next day, and he's like, 
do you realize how many people, myself included, are really pissed off at you because you <laughs> yes. came into the sport? You came yeah. into the sport and in six months you turned pro? He goes, myself and lots of other guys spent their lives trying to turn pro and we couldn't do it. You came in and did it in six months. And at that point, I realized, holy shit, fucking A. And so I went and did my, my pro debut. <clears throat> so my third ever bodybuilding contest was my pro debut and i placed uh, i placed fifth so i podiumed in my first fucking pro in my pro third bodybuilding contest i mean some of the guys backstage they were like the, the europeans they wouldn't believe me they're like oh come on you know you know we haven't seen you before that's because my third show no no they wouldn't believe me you know it was like because it was pretty off it just 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 seems like a pretty fucking tall tale to tell you know that someone's at a pro bodybuilding contest competing and that's their third show. <laughs> well, that was me. And so <clears throat> anyway, so that was, uh, then I became a pro and started competing as a pro. Now I'll be totally honest, fellas, <clears throat> you know, turning pro in my second contest and placing top five in my third ever bodybuilding contest. That's about the peak of my bodybuilding career. Cause those are pretty fucking, those are pretty fucking cool things. You know, at 40, you know, I'm 49 now. But along the way, you know, I, I'm realistic enough to understand I wasn't going to be taking down Phil Heath during, during his pre during his prime. You know, I was I'm just <clears throat> I'm a fucking, you know, here again, I'm just a fucking fat kid didn't have any hair in his cock and I fucking find myself doing all this pro thing. So I was happy as hell, you know, and uh, <clears throat> the, so bodybuilding has been a great thing. Um, I love it. What really what I really started to enjoy with bodybuilding is. I started to really get so aggressive with understanding the diet. Now it's like my dining practices are fucking crazy. I mean, now when I coach people in my dieting, um, I mean, it's, it's crazy. People, you know, they need to lose weight. And like, I can't believe I'm eating this much. I have this much energy. And I'm dropping this much body fat and my bench press is going up every week. I mean, it's, it's, Again, going back to the fact that I've always done things my way, my my dieting is the same fucking thing. You know, my <clears throat> my deep water method, right? It's an organic development of my own nutrition. Now, you go back in the timeline far enough. It was originally developed because I couldn't stop fucking overeating. And I needed to develop a way for me to get fucking strong and not get fucking fat if I overate, because I couldn't stop myself from over, I was going to overeat every day, probably three or four times. So how could I manage that and still get what I wanted? Well, <clears throat> that's where my deep water method came on, came together with just ludicrous amounts of protein, because that's what I would eat. I mean, I started eating, fuck, I started eating four plus pounds of flesh from the time I was about 21 years old. <laughs> Flesh. No, you know, I, I swear to God. I mean, now and now, my wife fucking just she just just like she you, know, you have no idea how much you eat. You know, I I probably eat from a cook standpoint. I probably eat six to seven pounds of flesh a day, right? Well, do the math on that. <clears throat> do the math on that from a cooks from an uncooked, which is the way most people measure. You lose about thirty percent when you cook. Yes, so it's a fucking yeah. Yeah. a lot of fucking flesh, man. But again, <laughs> a lot of I said, but again, yeah. I, it's all developed because in the, it's really was going back to the beginning of our talk. That's what I was basically solving problems. I was finding ways to get around all of my shortcomings and all the problems that I had developed and all the problems that I had. I had to create methodologies to deal with those. <clears throat> and that's, I mean, Again, the fact that I was, uh, you know, would eat till I couldn't fucking breathe, it turned out to be one of my biggest blessings. The fact that I had to do all the extra work turned out to be my biggest blessing, you know. And so it's it's pretty fucking cool, fellas. I got to tell you, I'm, <clears throat> I often kind of pinch myself and say, you know what? And, and, and I shit you not. If we were sitting at a table and I was 19 years old <clears throat> and – my hands were on a fucking cutting board, you know, me cleaver, my right fucking hand, right? <clears throat> if, if some, if God came down and sat next to me and said, listen, you cut off one of your fingers, you can be a pro bodybuilder. 
<laughs> there's the first one. It would have been I would, just like that. Because I, I mean, at that point, I was there was nothing I wouldn't fucking sacrifice. And God you know, goes, was holy fucking, shit, man, that was just a test. You didn't really have to do yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, you, know, you dumb down. fucker. You <laughs> dumb son of a bitch. You weren't supposed to do that, yeah. goddammit. This was supposed to be a fucking lesson, you know? <laughs> but, but instead, God says, okay, you tough little bastard. If you, you cut off another one, you can be a pro straw man. <laughs> there goes number two. You know, I would have literally, I would have made the sacrifices necessary to do any one of the three things that I did. And just the fact that my path led me to all three, I mean, Jesus Christ. It's like, I mean, I, again, one of you guys said earlier, many people try their whole lives to get to the hot, to the level that I've been in any one thing. And I've done it in three. Now, granted the, the difference is I've made it to the highest level, but I haven't been the best at the highest level, you know? So I, I, I definitely like to be honest with myself and with people that, that, you know, look at what I've done because there's a difference between being competitive as a pro and being a world champion. There's a big fucking difference. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Right. So, <clears throat> but again, I didn't think I was capable of any of it. So I'm fucking take it, <laughs> you know? Wow. <clears throat> so, but I'll tell you on that level, Jesus Christ, man. I've had a lot of fucking drug addiction. I've had a lot of fucking, a lot of shit that I've had to go through. And, it, and it, keep in mind, it was, it wasn't like it was like a, you know, it wasn't like I was one of those guys fucking running around doing cocaine. It was, you know, you're busting your ass and you get hurt and you go get fucking fixed. I've had multiple surgeries and you get fixed and then you got to have the drug <clears throat> to go through your rehab and then go back to, you know, to get back to fucking work. And a lot of times you get back to work and you realize I, I, you question, even though you could, I questioned if I could perform without it, because at that point, you're not taking the drug for pain anymore. You're taking the drug to feel normal, right? Well, you got to be this fucking personality that's over the top and you're just fucking quaking inside because you feel like you're going to fucking throw up if you don't take that pill. (laughs) <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, it's, it's, it's definitely, uh, you know, there's a, there's a lot of, there's a lot of, 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 I guess you'd say the, the backside, the stuff that you don't see that goes into all of this. And, you know, like, even like with wrestling, especially, you know, you got, everybody sees the shows, they see the t-shirts and see all this shit. What they don't see is the fucking four or five hour fucking goddamn plane rides and fucking tour bus rides and all the shit you got to do for that 10 minutes in the fucking ring. You know what I mean? <clears throat> so there's a lot of stuff that goes on, you know, but I mean, here, here's a perfect example. A lot of guys end up fucking really hurting themselves or die from end up you getting hurt, getting hooked on fucking pills and coming back. And this, listen to this, this is exactly what happens to many guys. It happened to me. Thank God. I'm still here to tell the story. <clears throat> so I popped my bicep loose. I told you about that. Right. And, uh, I had, Basically, I had six exact fucking weeks to get fixed and back in the ring in Japan. And uh, my surgeon was like, you're not going to go out of your sling in six weeks. I said, yes, I am. I said, you need to fix me in a way that I can get back there. So he did some kind of crazy shit to make it extra strong. And uh, it was, I mean, my rehab to get back to the ring was brutal, man. Fucking brutal. And I was taking Oxycontin, which is just straight up devil. I mean, that stuff should yeah. not be fucking old. That should not be a medication, you know? <clears throat> anyway, so, you know, and then when I come back to work and everybody knows I had an injury and I got a fucking pocket full of fucking Oxycontin, everybody in the fucking tour bus is a fucking party. Yeah, you know, it's friend, like, yeah. yo, fuck, yeah. yo. It's like, well, everybody, you know, fuck any, we all, we had all share. So it wasn't like, you know, but anyway, so <clears throat> I'm taking the, and at that point, I mean, I'll be honest, man, I was taking like, 80 milligram fucking tablets of that shit, which is, I mean, you, you give that to a normal person, you'd have to fucking call 911. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It's just way too much, you know, but they, <clears throat> you know, as your tolerance gets higher, you take more. So I ended up basically taking my own pain meds on this tour. Well, towards the end of the tour, you know, the doctor is kind of looking at everybody seeing, okay, well, shit, is, is he going to be able to get out there and do his job? You know, we're fucking coming to the big shows at the end of the tour. <clears throat> so when you're 
basically you're when when you're one match away, you're kind of staged up, and that's where the, you see the doctor, and uh, he's kind of looking at you and figuring out if you need something, and because his job is to make sure you can go do your job, and uh, he's like, "How you doing?" You know, I'm like, oh, "I'm fucking tired." Da, 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 da. Next thing you know, I feel this fucking poke in my goddamn lower glute just below my trunks. Because keep in mind, we're just fucking wearing a little bikini. This fucking assistant fucking gave me a shot. I'm like, fuck, what was that? He was oh, just make sure you can get through the match. And I'm thinking to myself, oh, fuck, he just gave me a fucking painkiller. I'm fucking riding the edge on this fucking 80 milligram. Oxy <laughs> fucking. Right. And I'm like, holy shit. So I, <clears throat> I'm like, all right, I'll the adrenaline. I'll get out there. My music hits, I go out, boom, I'm, you know, I feel fucking great, you know. <clears throat> and then next thing you know, you know, they're doing, they're announcing us and getting ready to go. And I'm like, holy shit, I'm slowing down here. And it was like, I was like really starting to fucking slow down to the point where I was like, Jesus Christ, I hope I'm going to stay awake. Well, thank God I did. But literally it was one of those, it was one of those really fucking hard hitting matches to where, it, it actually helped me because there was a couple of spots where it was moving fast, but I was so fucking, forgive the term, fucking stoned. Everything was moving slow. <laughs> you Had I not been in that situation where adrenaline was pumping, fuck, who knows if I'd end up, you know, because that happens to a lot of guys. The, the doctors will give them something. They're already taking their own meds. The doctors don't know it. It just fucking turns their lights out. They just fucking fall asleep and they'll wake up, you know? It's fucking scary shit. Yeah. yeah. John, you, yeah. you've had no uh, shortage of experiences in your uh, 49 years. I feel like, like we just scratched the yeah, surface I know, like, here, too. I, I think, like, uh, uh, someday long from now when you're on your deathbed, you'll be able to look on it with a pretty good smile on your face knowing that, like, you didn't, you didn't really miss out on anything. Uh, <laughs> you well, fellas, here's the best. got left well, on the here's table. The, here's the best part. You know, the fact that, that, that we want – the, you know, the, we want people to listen to this and not be like over the top offended. We're telling stories that can be told here with you guys. You know, if we're in a, in a different, if we're in a, in a different rated show, we could be going into a whole new set of stories here. Right, right, right. <laughs> uh, well, but which of the, you know, which of those three, and I know there's a lot of different ways to look at it though, but. Uh, which of those three careers was is is or was the most challenging for you? That's a great fucking question, <clears throat> and my answer to that <clears throat> is probably not going to be terribly exciting, but it's the fucking truth. Is basically what it comes down to is what you're seeing is is my philosophy of life in these three careers, and I live this way in my normal life too. I put myself in these positions. And, and keep in mind, I, like I said, I do it outside of these three careers where I purposely fucking scare the shit out of myself because you're willing to do things you wouldn't do when you're comfortable. And so each career, because I landed in them so fucking quickly, I dealt with the same thing. I was scared to death because I wanted to succeed. I was, you know, I was, I was in really, I was in the fastest moving current of each one of these endeavors so fucking fast. It was all I could do to keep my head above water. And then once you keep your head above water, you're able to do better. And so ultimately they all had their own challenges. And from my perspective, they all felt the same. Now let's go from a slightly, let's go from a, let's answer that from a different way. So we actually get an answer for you <laughs> 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 from the challenging standpoint, I would say, wrestling was hands down the and don't be wrong fucking strong man was a fucking beautiful experience and there was all sorts of distractions in strong man but wrestling was just it was just a different world man it's like you know the um you know there's just so much at your disposal you know women you know drugs money whatever you wanted to do was there and i think that was probably the hardest thing was to not derail my career because you see it happen all around you. <clears throat> I mean, you got guys that are just, they're at the top. And then next thing you know, they fuck around with, with, you know, a drug or some women a little bit too fucking long and their career's not climbing anymore. 
And here's the thing, and that's for, or we should say that's sports, sport entertainment. By the time you realize your career's not climbing anymore, it's actually been declining for a while. It's just you've been so fucking blind from the shit you had your, your nose buried in, so to speak. So I think that was probably the hardest because I knew that, you know, I, I didn't have a long time in that, in that uh, career. And I knew that I wanted to milk every bit of it that I could. But it was very, very challenging to not give in to the things that came along, the opportunities that came along with that, you know. And then I fuck strongman kind of similar to that too, because see, strongman, when I was in, social media wasn't around. Right. Mm -hmm. So you could fucking go to Europe and you could do whatever the fuck you wanted and nobody (laughs) was going to know about it. Nobody was going to take a video of you and throw it on. uh, Dude, I'm telling you. Yeah. I mean, now it's this fucking different world. I mean, it's such a different world. I mean, you, you would go, you could go over to Europe for a couple of weeks and you come home and literally what was in Europe stayed in Europe unless you fucking told somebody because (laughs) that's just how disconnected it was. Now with social media, that changed the game. So social media just started to kind of break loose in my, in my wrestling career, which then kind of helped me make the right decisions. Cause you know, keep in mind all this fucking happened and I've got kids, you know what I mean? And my wife, Granted, she's been with me just about the whole time. <clears throat> and I got to tell you, this is a tough fucking bitch because she has gone through. And, and, I, and I give her all the fucking props. I mean, literally, I, I just spoil the shit out of her now because I look, I think back and I think, God damn, I, I was such a fucking dick. You know, and the, it was, it, I didn't really knowingly, I wasn't knowingly a dick. It was just the space that you're in because you're so focused on trying to do what you're doing. And it's really, you just, it's just ultimate selfishness is what it is, you know? And, uh, you know, basically she, you know, like in my wrestling career, I'd be gone fucking two, three weeks. She's taking care of the kids. She's taking care of our fucking house, our fucking rentals, everything running the front, everything. I come home, right. And of course she misses me, but then I'm just this fucking big beat up mess that she's got to fucking nurse back to health and fucking send back out on the road, you know? <laughs> and so she was just working. I mean, just, just when I say working, she doesn't have a job, but she just, just, just holding everything together was really fucking tough, you know? And <clears throat> I got to tell you, I'm, I'm really, we have a, such a killer relationship and I'm very thankful that, that we made it through all of that. And even with like some of the, you know, you know, some of the fucking, you know, painkiller addictions I went through, she had to go through that shit with me. You know, Mm -hmm. I mean, there's a few times, I mean, so think like this, right? Yeah. We're in fucking Starbucks. We drop our kids off at school. We're fucking Starbucks. I take too big of a fucking dose. Next thing you know, I'm like fucking falling asleep, head down on the fucking table in the middle of Starbucks. It's like, come on, honey, we've got to get you to the car. Well, I can barely fucking walk. You know, it's like that stuff is just fucking not okay. And it's fucking embarrassing. But, you know, it was just little bits and pieces. But she had to deal with shit like that, you know. And uh, so <clears throat> long and short of it is, you know, all of the all three careers were very challenging in their own very different way. But I think the wrestling career was probably the one that just about put the fucking one, two punch on my lady. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. I think judging that's... her, judging her is probably the best way to answer the question. <laughs> I think that's a good answer. Yeah. 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 Because when, you know, when, when I came home and started bodybuilding, <clears throat> you know, I mean, Grant, we went through, when I came home, we went through a lot of shit too, because it's like, you know, I was not used to being home. You know, and she wasn't used to me being home. And it was like, you know, we went through a lot of, there was a lot of trials and tribulations. And so when I finally settled in into bodybuilding and, and, you know, then things kind of smoothed out a little bit, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's been a fucking wild ride for sure, fellas, you know, (laughs) John, we've got this game. We play with each guest. Uh, that was probably a good time to hop into it. If it works for you, we call it. Oh, fuck. Yeah, bro. Lay it on me. Overrated, underrated. So we've got a special, uh, John Anderson series of topics here where we'll shoot them over to you and you just got to let us know whether they're underrated or overrated. 
Uh, you just can't. So you just want me to say <clears throat> yeah, you under? Just, you want? Are yeah. we doing it right now, like ver- verbally? Under overrated? Boom! Right now. Yep, well, we'll do it right now. But you can elaborate. Let's go, as, man. Yeah, you're allowed to elaborate as much or as little as yeah, you want on each usually one. Usually, give, like give us it. your I like it. give us your answer and let us know why it's your answer. Okay, I like it. Let's go. All right, topic number one: overrated or underrated traps. <laughs> 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 oh shit! Well, I, you, I mean, this and for anyone that of, hasn't seen a picture or doesn't, if you haven't seen John Anderson, go make sure to check him out on Instagram <laughs> or just Google him right now. John, your, your traps are ridiculous. You so got to set is, on yeah, there, right? Well, you know, the thing about it is, is I guess so. I'd have to say under or overrated. I yeah. would say overrated okay. because they they get more attention than they're worth. You know. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and what I mean by that is, is it's, it's like there, you know, it's, it's a fucking muscle and it gets, it's, here's the thing, everybody. And I mean, fucking everybody is going to, I shouldn't say everybody. People are always looking for a way to take a shot at somebody. <clears throat> right. And so my traps is the, you know, is the first thing that's easy for people to fucking hit because when this whole synthol thing broke fucking loose, that's what everybody, Oh yeah. It's synthol, uh-huh. synthol, synthol, synthol. Well, you look at these fucking synthol freaks, you know, like if you YouTube synthol freaks, you're talking about a normal fucking guy that weighs 160 pounds. Yeah, right. That's got it's, right. it's, it's got yeah, a right. it's got a fucking bicep that looks like a fucking watermelon. Yeah. That's synthol. <laughs> now, yeah. So when you look like if you look at like my videos and you see when I move a a, a muscle with synthol will not actually have a striation or some sort of a movement to it. It's just a fucking blob. So <clears throat> it always fucking kills me when people get into uh, synth all this, synth all that, blah, blah, blah. So I think it's when I say overrated, it's just because they've got fucking far more attention than they ever deserve. <laughs> I think that's a fair answer. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> overrated or underrated three wheelers? Three wheelers. <clears throat> Interesting. I, I would say, I would say, God damn, I could split on that one. I, I would say they're overrated. When I say overrated, because three wheelers, when my when I think of three wheelers, I think of the, the good old fucking nineteen eighty six fucking Honda three wheelers. Yeah. I have I have two of them in yeah. my fucking house in Mexico, <laughs> and everybody gets all fucking finished. Oh my god. People die on those. Well, fuck. People die walking across the fucking street. Yeah, Shut the fuck up, man. Cars it's, too. Also, it's also yeah. got one more like, wheel fuck. on it than a motorcycle does. Yeah, like Jesus Christ. It's like, okay, I grew up on one of these motherfuckers. The yeah. one I grew up on didn't even have any fucking shocks. Yeah. You know, it was just a big fucking bubble tire. So, yeah. Yeah. you know, people get all fucking bent out of shape about you're going to fucking die on a three-wheeler. Jesus Christ! You could fucking die crossing the street. Shut the fuck up. Uh, for what it's worth, I love three wheelers. Oh yeah, so it, and it's uh, like it's uh, like oh, when I think of three wheeler, I think of that red Honda. Yep. Like that's like the three wheeler. Dude, it's like the big, I got two big, of them. Big, big, <clears throat> big, I, one yeah, of my Honda's friends yeah. up, had two of them too. It was yeah. it was the thing. Dude, they're fucking sick, man. When I was down and when I when we bought our place in Mexico, I was looking for fucking uh, ATVs to go on the beach because we're running fucking beach, <clears throat> and uh, so I started looking at the local fucking. Uh, facebook marketplace right i was like i can't fucking believe how many three wheelers are down here this yeah. is fucking crazy and then, and then even better they were like 500 bucks yeah. yeah i was like jesus christ so <clears throat> so i picked up a couple of those motherfuckers right away do yours you know? fire do, will they fire up when you go to use them or i mean do they do they you know it depends yeah. on how long it's been like yeah. usually we we go there <clears throat> pretty often uh we're it's been about fuck it's probably been six eight months um, you know, about six months since we've been there because we're moving in, getting settled into our, our new house that we're having done. <clears throat> but nor, when this house is done, we'll go back and forth probably monthly. Oh yeah. So when you're, when, if they've been run in 30 days, you just fucking fire right up, yeah. you know, and here's the best thing about it. Here's the best thing about it. <clears throat> they're fucking killer. They're, I mean, we, as we just start, we love them. They're fucking Honda. So you just, I mean, they're 200, so they're not yeah. big enough for me. I can take one of these motherfuckers down on the beach, run the fucker hot, wide fucking open. It'll get so hot, it'll stop running, right? <laughs> <clears throat> so I just get off the thing and go get in the water for a little while, wait for it to fucking cool off, come back, and it'll fucking kick, fucking second kick. It'll yeah. start right back up. Yeah. And I'll run it till it fucking till it dies because it got too hot again. I mean, you can't beat that. You know, you can't kill it if you tried. <laughs> 
you know? And, and just for the record, it can't kill me either. Cause I know how to ride it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> good, good. But you can't, you gotta love those. I mean, you can't go wrong with a fucking 1986 fucking <laughs> Honda three wheeler, baby. Come on, baby. Amen. I like <laughs> it. I like it. Right. Overrated or underrated flat caps. Flat caps. What you gotta? I'm, I'm, well, when you say flat, well, you might I'm not getting a picture in my you, mind. You might call call it something different. You, I've seen you wearing some before. It's almost like uh, I don't know if you've ever seen Peaky Blinders, but it's it's the it's some people call it like a soft cap. Uh, it's a hat you wear in your head and. Uh, kind of like European yeah, looking. Yeah, it doesn't like, have like a bill that comes lot, out really. Yeah, and a lot of times like they're made out of wool or whatever, and like they're kind of got. Oh, you're talking. You're ta- Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. <laughs> yeah, you yeah know. you're talking yeah. about. Yeah, what I do you wear call those fuckers it? all the time. Yeah, what do you what do you call that? <laughs> I, I guess. I fuck. I don't know. I call it. We were talking about fucking. We were talking about fucking. I call it a fucking hat. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we were yeah. talking about it before this, and Tanner said the same thing. I'm like, I don't know what the hell that is, <laughs> and then I'm like, yeah, I guess it's just like a hat, but I don't uh, know what it is. It's. <laughs> I don't honestly. If I answer this one, I want to give it the most fucking props possible. So what do we say? Under or over? Under. I fucking. Yeah. I love yeah. that. Yeah, I fucking love those motherfuckers, dude. Yeah. I swear, the only fucking problem I got is my goddamn head is so fucking big <laughs> that i have a hard time finding these fucking things that fit me but yeah no i love those monthly things oh yeah you know they, because here's the thing <clears throat> they put a little swag on a person yeah. <laughs> they're a little you know fancier I mean? than, yeah. than a baseball cap or you know it's... like my fucking my my father-in-law came to visit a while back and i was like dan all right here's a deal you know we're going somewhere. You're going to have to fucking wear this hat, you know? And I gave him one, you know, and he fucking loved it. He wore it all the time. He's wearing the house, you know, because once someone puts it on, they get that vibe, they get that swagger, you know? And so, <clears throat> but yeah, no, I, I think those things, I love the, I love those things. You know, I take and put a pair of, what I like to do is I'll put a pair of my Versace fucking sunglasses on with the big fucking metal motherfucking yeah. thing on the side, you know? And then you got one of those fucking caps on, you know, it's just, it's just like my wife says, I look like a porn star. Director. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's a vibe for sure. You, like you know what I would say? Like, uh, and John, I don't know. I don't want to insult you if you've ever worn a foot. You're, you're foot. never, you're yeah. never, never going to insult me, brother. Okay. Don't and you I, worry. And I, I don't know that it would, but. It's kind of like people that wear a fedora, it's kind of what they want to look like, but it, people that wear a fedora always look a little douchey to me where you can wear a cap you, like you gotta that. You got to fucking, then, yeah. I got to tell you, I've actually, I've, here's the thing. A fedora, you got to fucking be, you got to be a fucking stud to wear a fucking fedora. And I, and I have tried many fucking occasions to find, because if you're going to wear one, you got to pull it down low and you got to look like a little bit of a low rider to wear that motherfucker, you know? Yeah. But here's the thing. I mean, if I had one that I could get down low enough of my head, I would probably give it a ride. But I got to tell you. You gotta be. You gotta have some fucking confidence that you could wear that motherfucker well. Because the bottom line is, I mean, Jesus Christ. Sometimes you see these motherfuckers wearing the floors like you just don't know what quite it's what like, to say. No, don't do that, man. Yeah, like, yeah. yeah it's yeah. like it's yeah. like you know you. It's like what you. It's like you go like you see it and you want to say something, but you don't even know what to say. <laughs> just, it's not good. And, then, and that's when you know. realize, and that's, that's when you realize, okay, sometimes it's just better not to say anything <laughs> because, <Yep>. you know, <laughs> the only but yeah, are... I fucking love those hats, bro. Okay. God damn it. I, I love them. Uh, Fuck yes. Uh, overrated or underrated. We, we know you're a, a man that appreciates a good cigar. So overrated or underrated Swisher sweets. <laughs> I fucking love it. <clears throat> well, if if someone doesn't fucking know cigars, then you know, then it's because the thing about a Swisher Sweet is that's a fucking cigar that a fucking high school kid like I smoked those in a fucking high school <clears throat> because when you didn't know they were fucking they were the best. You know what I mean? So, but then once you get a little further down the path and you start to understand what a cigar is, <laughs> then you realize those motherfuckers are so that far over it. They shouldn't what? even they're get not existence. supposed to be grape flavored. Like that's- <laughs> yeah, they, they, they shouldn't even be in existence, you know? I mean, if you can buy a fucking pack of fucking cigars, like if you can buy like 30 fucking cigars. For what I pay for one of mine, that thing should not have been rolled, you know? 
<laughs> or if there's a piece of wood attached to the end of it. Yeah, you know? yeah, there's yeah, a wood chip. A, yeah, the wood chip. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh fuck. That's that's I sign number it. one that it's not a good cigar. Yeah. <laughs> that's it. That's it. <laughs> oh, that's good. I love uh, it. Great news, John. You passed overrated, underrated. So that's we're excited good. to let you know that. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. I think that's a cool little section to your show, fellas. Yeah. I like that. Yep, we, you know? we always have fun with that one. And uh Thinking now too, there there's something when we we had told a couple of our listeners that you're going to be on, and someone brought up a really good point, uh, and we kind of talked about your your time on the Powercast Powercast that first time many years ago, and a really memorable thing that you talked about <laughs> that they brought up was your hemorrhoid issue that you had talked oh, about yeah. at the time, and they wanted to know an update like, uh, did <laughs> how, did you how find a miracle? Yeah, how, how are things going and? <laughs> Did you find a miracle? Well, you know cure? the thing with the the thing with the fucking hemorrhoids is they always fucking come when you least expect it. You know, <laughs> it's like God damn it. You know, so but what I what I basically what I found because I'm again going back to you know kind of my in bodybuilding I've really been doing a lot with diet especially since I started coaching diet I, so I've gotten so good at it so now I basically am able to use flax seeds to keep my fucking dumps to where they're just the consistency I'm looking for, you know, where I don't have to get in the shower, you know, when I'm done taking a dump occasionally, you know, you know, it's like, you know, you, you know, you know, it's perfect. When, yeah. Sometimes when it's you go, a when, bad idea, when you, but, yeah, when you yeah. fucking go in for the first wipe yeah. and you're like, Oh, oh God, God. Yeah. if the yeah. second one looks like the first one, there's not going to be a third. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, just reset. And so, yeah. yeah. And so, so basically, you know, I don't clean from dry. <laughs> that's paper. it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> this is, this is going to be a fucking shower with, the fucking wands going around the corner yeah. you know so ultimately the hemorrhoid situation ultimately i only fucking get them when i'm in that final fucking approach for a bodybuilding show largely because i got to start pulling uh like because i'll use like uh i have a big one on using metamucil sugar-free metamucil or flax seeds and once i start, have to start pulling that stuff out which really has more to do with with keeping any sort of minor bloat at the equation so you're slim in the midsection i swear to christ every time i get the, the that fiber out of my fucking diet it's not like i'm even there fucking you know having a wrestling match with a turd it just all of a sudden just fucking comes out of nowhere i'm like well, fuck where's that pain coming from and the problem is it's up in the fucking hole <laughs> you know yeah. it's not easy to get to so like you got to take that you know, you get, what is it, uh, Preparation H, right? Yeah, That's the yeah. stuff you use for it. Well, have you ever seen where you open that fucking box, and there's the tube, and then there's like a two-inch yeah. fucking white cone yeah. with fucking holes all around the sides? What in the fuck are you going to do sticking that thing in your asshole? I'm like, I will gladly fucking cover my fucking finger with this shit and bury two yeah. knuckles in my asshole before I fucking stick that fucking white cone up there, you know? <laughs> but yeah, the, the hemorrhoid situation for those of you that are, are curious to know, it's for the most part under control, but motherfucker, when they do come, I hate to say it, I gotta go fucking two knuckle two knuckles deep to yeah. get them fucking handled. You, well, know? you said like <laughs> the flaxseed and stuff you're talking. So you're saying you eat it? It's not a uh, enema that you give. It's not a not a. You don't use it like ointment. Oh yeah, I eat it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, I take, I take that. I take the flax seeds and I put a little fucking butter in it, and I just start fucking rubbing it between my butt cheeks. Tears it right up. <laughs> yeah, a little secret. Oh, but, yeah, no, I, I use the flax seeds as a form of helping digestion, but yeah. it just helps the fucking nothing jams up coming out. That's a better way yeah, to put yeah, it. You yeah. Know? Yeah. yeah, we didn't want anyone to be confused when they were listening here. <laughs> We'd have all kinds yeah, of people because, jamming flax seeds up their ass <laughs> when we, when, because when the when I remember it was when the last time i was on when silent mike was still with uh wow. with mark that's when i was telling him, like come on dude i mean let me borrow your finger real quick you know because i was i was i just i just hot off a show so i think i was actually competing somewhere close to him at the time so i had come and seen them the next day and so i was just nursing a fucking terrible one at the time you know see <clears throat> that's the one when you got one of those 
and you got to take a dump. It's like, oh, oh god oh. damn it! Worst Fuck. thing in the you world. Gotta, like, it is it's honestly like, it's one of the worst like, things in the world. Oh yeah, you're God. you're getting yourself you're getting yourself amped up like you're gonna do a fucking set of fifty fucking <laughs> you know squats, you know. It's like because you know the kind of pain that you're gonna go through, and you know you can do it. It just fucking hurts. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so the the hemorrhoids. So for those of you out there that were that were wanting to know that I was okay, I thank you sincerely. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, they're just concerned. <laughs> 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 Oh, I love it. No, love it. Uh, that that's awesome, John. We uh, that that's great. We really appreciate uh, think, having you on. I think here. we learned a lot today. We learned a lot, and I, I think the biggest thing we learned is we're going to have to have you on again another time because uh, I do think we probably only just scratched the surface. Oh yeah, one hundred percent, fellas. I was going to say my thing is this: <clears throat> when I do a show with somebody, if they don't have they don't ask to have me come back, I fucked up. Yeah. You know, yeah. because, because the bottom line is there's a lot of shit that we can talk about, but can you deliver the, can you deliver the information in a way that actually makes the fucking host want to have you come back? So I appreciate the, the, the invite for the second show. And I look forward to it, fellas. Uh, we'll, we'll go, we'll go a little deeper into some, yeah. into some crevices that are, yeah. that are a little bit, that are a little darker and a little scarier. And- uh, a little bit, a <laughs> uh, uh, little bit of deeper water. That's it. Go into some yeah. fucking deep, in some deep dark water. Yeah. That's it. So, wh- where do people, you know, find you on Instagram, or if they want to know more about deep water and all that stuff, where uh, do people check you out at? The best place. Here's the thing. I'm glad you guys said that. And I want to tell everybody who's listening that <clears throat> I'm in a place in my career now where I'm really, really happy, fucking giving back. And what I mean by that is I spend a lot of time in my Instagram DMs, just that one, because it's easy to just manage one spot. But I I go in there, people come in and ask questions and bullshit. I am there and I'm happy to answer questions and I'm happy to give you advice and inspire. So the best way to get a hold of me is my Instagram account in my DMs. Uh, So my name is spelled a little fucked up. So it's John, J-O-N. And then my last name is Anderson, A-N-D-E-R-S-E-N. So at the John Anderson. And you'll know you're at the right fucking page because you're going <laughs> to see know. some big <laughs> some big fucking idiot. Most of the fucking posts, he's not wearing a fucking shirt. And he's fucking flexing and he's using all sorts of profanities. But somehow, some way, it actually makes you want to get off the couch and do something. <laughs> so... If I looked like so, you, I don't think I'd wear a shirt. Nah, so. shirts, would, shirts yeah. wouldn't be allowed. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, fellas. I'll tell you. Now we we just moved into the uh, we moved into the desert to kind of get away from uh, people. You know, I mean, I I love people, but at the same time, I also like to. I'm at that point now where I'm happy to have the isolation when I want it, and it's fucking great out here because it's warm. I, I don't fucking wear shoes. I don't wear a fucking shirts. It's crazy. I fucking love it. I mean, I have a gym right here in my fucking place. We got, we're on a lake. We got to, we're having a pool put in. I only leave my fucking compound probably once a week. And when I do, I'll put on flip flops. I don't want, so shirts, highly overrated. Yeah, fucking there you go. Under, underwear, nice. highly overrated. Yeah. Socks, no fucking way. Shoes, <laughs> only if I'm fucking, only if it's raining outside. Yeah. So, <laughs> so yeah, I mean, literally, I'm sitting right here right now. I got a fucking pair of MHP fucking sweatshirt, uh, sweats, uh, excuse me, uh, they're cut off sweatpants in, in, I'm just fucking chilling. I've been wearing this all fucking day. I trained like this, you know, all I got to do is just take off the fucking wet clothes after I train and put a pair of dry ones. I'm happy. (laughs) So, but anyway, fellas, I want to thank you very much. I had a fucking blast on your show and we'll have even a bigger blast the next time through. So you guys let me know when you want to rock and I'm fucking here. Absolutely. Awesome. John. Thank you. Thanks, John. You got it. Thank you guys. Have a good one. Yeah. We'll see see you. Big John, what do you give uh, Big John time? Cool, cool beans, beans, cool beans. Cool beans. Maybe cool we beans. give him cool beans, or maybe we give him flax seeds. <laughs> cool flax seeds. Um, we should probably read an ad right away. Yeah, we better before we forget. We better do it to him at advertisement style. Um, speaking of timelines, 
This show is brought to you by Texas Power Bars. Buddy Caps first started lifting weights in the late 60s again and began powerlifting in the mid-70s. At that time, he was working for Image Barbell Building Gym Equipment. Around 1976, a local machine shop started making Olympic bars for them calling it the Image Bar. In 1977, Image Barbell became Champion Barbell. It was then that Buddy started looking at the bars with an intent to change them for the better. In 1979, Buddy bought his first lathe to begin addressing the known issues. In 1980, his passion, drive, and purpose now had a greater mission. Buddy set out on his own to make what he believed was the greatest bar he'd ever seen and trained with, and the Texas Power Bar was born. It was strong as a house with the best knurling, and it was maintenance-free. Hundreds of state, national, international, and world powerlifting records have been and continue to be set and broken on the Texas Power Bar. To buy your own, uh, Texas Power Bar, Texas Deadlift Bar, Texas Squat Bar, all the different finishes, everything in their lineup, visit them at texaspowerbars.com. That was quite the... Quite, quite so, the interview there, wasn't it? Yeah, we put putting together quite the, the episode. Might here. be the record for maybe the that's, longest oh, one up there. You know, it's, I'm sure we've had some that are in that territory, but yeah, uh, it, yeah, it's definitely got to uh, be in in the region. John's a guy that's got a lot of good stories. He does. Well. I, yeah, I do not doubt he could go for several more yes, hours. No problem. Yes, yes that was good. Stuff. <laughs> it was fun though. Yeah, uh, we did uh, talk about our new drop. Actually, I don't know why. I, gestured to myself i'm not actually wearing You're, anything in well, the new drop, as of this moment you yeah. technically still do have the new drop on because the new new uh, one's as of yet. our moment yeah, but not the moment that people yeah. are hearing this um but yeah you know we we already hyped that up so make sure you hop on get that the, the two to the two t's the yep. shorts um shorts i mean come on shorts those probably won't last long we know historically how the shorts go so um, but yeah, I am, we didn't talk about the old stuff. I am wearing some of the old stuff. You, you can also buy that. Yeah. And that's not old. It's still pretty new. I mean, at this week, it's, it's like a month at, old. At this, at this point, it's like 20 some days yeah. old. And, it's, uh, I just started wearing the pinup tee and I'm a fan of the pinup tee. And it looks good. It's a classic. Yeah. So make sure you get on the new stuff. And also, you know, the discord's pretty popping. Um, Ooh. if you were in the discord, you could have possibly suggested a question to ask John, like, um. I don't even remember who asked who suggested yeah, that now. Yeah, yeah. But uh, <laughs> there's some there's some fun things happening in there. So yep. uh, sign up to become a supporting member, and you can get in on that action too. Ex- excellent. Do we uh, do we have some podcast reviews or anything, Tanner? Um, we c- we we do. I'm going to read one. This was a special submission because the way Apple Podcasts work, mm-hmm. we can only see the reviews left within. I don't know if I would say either North America or the United States. I don't know what the right yeah. answer to that. I can't see ones from other world and locations. We all know Massonomics listeners are worldwide. So right. So, so we don't s- want them to feel left out. Yeah. Someone sent me theirs. Uh, this was an England review and I normally can't see that, but so they DM'd it. Is there a lot of like English uh, slang in it? In that yeah, none say, of us will understand. Oh, puppycock. <laughs> <laughs> Talking about they, flat hats. Yeah, and like, <laughs> fish and chips. <laughs> <laughs> sorry for offending uh <laughs> sorry i don't even have a good i don't even t t yay yum god t will is save good. the queen yeah. <laughs> do uh, i make you randy baby i think okay, that's austin the, powers quotes, okay, yeah, yeah. 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 austin powers works. okay yeah you can do yeah. anything austin powers yes austin powers quotes <laughs> that's how i need to think about it from now on if i ever do uh honestly it's yeah. not mine <laughs> who throws a shoe <laughs> that's what english people uh, talk english like people yeah. <laughs> okay so that he s- sent me mine directly and it's from joe day 007 mm. james bond yes Another famous Englishman. A man of mystery and uh, uh, prestige. The greatest show. I tune in every week to listen to this wild podcast about nothing. Due to this, I now work three jobs in the hope that one day I will be able to afford a pair of the infamous lift shorts. Until that day, I will be surviving on a steady diet of McDonald's apple pie dipped in McDonald's ice cream. Also, I have started using the word druthers in almost every sentence, which is causing me to look either incredibly smart <laughs> Or incredibly dumb. I th- in England, I assume that that word's just common knowledge. That's true. Right? I, I, I'm sure that it's just like, it. ah, druthers. <laughs> if back. I have me druthers, mm. I'll order <laughs> druthers to you. <laughs> yeah. Matey. They, they tip their flat yeah. hat and go along and get their tea and strumpets. Yeah, you know, the English people were listening to this one like, it's a flat hat. <laughs> <laughs> we're all wearing them. You idiots. You wankers. <laughs> yeah. uh, keep up the good work, guys. This is from Joe, and he... 
uh, signed it as uh, Southampton, England. Mm. I wonder what specifically part of South, if it's like the western well, corner of... It's actually, that's like the town, I think. Oh, oh, okay. I but thought, look, look, Southampton. It's yeah. almost like, seems like there should be an H in an there. An extra H, and yeah. maybe even a space so that it's two words. Oh, but. yeah. Or is it, or is it Southampton? <laughs> I, it's, it's English, I don't know. Southampton. Southampton. Hmm. That's how you would say it, I guess. So, Southampton. Okay. <sighs> English, can't live with them. Yeah. So you like form a, your own country. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So you break away yeah. and make your own country start yeah. it all over. Uh, so that was the only one I had prepared today. Okay. So that would well, wrap up our. I'm glad. I'm glad we got to hear from our overseas listeners. Yeah, do that we, was exciting. Do we have uh, uh, anything from our good friends over at Spud Inc.? Do we ever, Tanner? Um, Close friends of the podcast over this at Spud Ink. Uh, we got a little treat worked up here. Uh, just, uh, just hitting the old Spud Ink button on, okay. the, on the Spud Ink machine here. Okay. <laughs> um, it's, it's yellow, I hope. The, the button. <laughs> today it is. Today's episode of the Massonomics podcast is also brought to you by Spud Ink and the 36 inch skinny but straight bar. The 36 inch skinny but straight bar is the Big Papa version of their popular 21 inch straight bar attachment. The longer bar allows for a wider grip obviously hitting the triceps in another fashion, but also for those guys with elbow tendonitis issues on closer grip work. I think we all know at least one of those guys. <laughs> Too many of them, if you ask me. <laughs> it can lessen the pain. No limits here for whatever you like to train, as it can be used for anything you fancy, back, biceps, rows, and more. Check out Spud Inc. and the Skinny But Straight Bar online at spud-inc-straps.com. Thank you, Spud Inc. Thank you to the rest of our sponsors. Uh, make sure to like us on YouTube. Subscribe on YouTube, I believe. Mm -hmm. uh, ring the little ding-dong bell on YouTube so you get a notification. You can get in on the race for first comment every week. It's ridiculous. You won't do well, but you can get in on it still. <laughs> yeah. You can feel like part of the team. Uh, participation yeah, trophies, yeah. I think, are maybe being given out. Uh, mostly squat mats have been... Cleaning house. Doing pretty well lately. I guess he's trying to catch up with Swim Hack. It's an uphill battle, but he's trying to trying to damned us. Uh, we mentioned the Discord, so beco co become a supporting member of the podcast, and you can get in on that little cultish-like community. <laughs> um, like us on Facebook. Like us on TikTok. Mm, buy our stuff that we talked about. Tommy, where do they find you on Instagram? You can find me at Tomahawk underscore D. You can find me at Tanner underscore Baird, but just make sure to follow Massonomics at Massonomics. See you.